everybody. Welcome to Flagrant. Happy Trans Visibility Day. Hey, yes. That's big. Akash That's didn't know big. what Trans Visibility Day was. I did not. So basically what happened was the world, and by the world, I mean right wing Twitter and Instagram was absolutely furious that Trans Visibility Day was made the uh -huh. same day as Easter. You did see this a little no, bit. No, right? I just put it together. Okay. So <laughs> Easter and Trans Visibility Day was made the same day. And you know who made it the same day according to right wing Twitter and who? Instagram? Who? Well, Joe Biden oh, made it. He probably forgot. He it was declared Easter. it. He might have <laughs> forgotten. Or, Mark, what, what might else be true? I saw this and I was like, this is crazy. Like, why is Biden trying to piss off everybody? Because when like, you see it on the surface, there's like, there's no way that this is actually possible because there are a team of people that are there to make sure things like this do not happen. It just seems unrealistic because this is an election cycle. Yeah, you'd be I'm on top of that. I'm not saying that Biden is going to win the religious right. Mm -hmm. But you don't want to irritate them. You don't want to lose them. Exactly. Push them, them in yeah, Donald yeah, Trump's yeah. direction, right? Yeah. So we're like, there's no f***ing way that this is true. But everybody is posting it. Every headline is, Joe Biden declares Easter Sunday Trans Visibility Day. Which isn't technically wrong. But... But it seems like a little misleading. Because no. the first Trans Visibility Day was founded in 2009. That's oh, what how I'm many years thinking. ago is that? This was uh, 15 years That's 15 years. So the first Trans yeah. Visibility Day is founded 15 years ago, right? And I go, okay. Now, what is something very unique about Easter? The day Jesus is risen, right? That is actually, yo. Well, that is fire that you know I'll fuck with you for that, bro. You know what I mean? That is actually why. Christ is king. Next don't question. let nobody tell Next you different. Question. Christ is motherfucking king. You hate it. Listen, <laughs> Christ is king, dog. <laughs> Get the camera on, dog. Shifty, do something. <laughs> Christ is king and let him know. <laughs> <laughs> Christ is king. Happy yeah. Trans Visibility Day. You got to get fired so, from Daily Wire. Okay, you listen, we're off. fucking ready to That was a good response. You're charged up. You're being anti-Semitic right now. Dude. Okay, listen. Okay. <laughs> now, Easter, because it's on a Sunday. Correct. The date changes, changes. every ah, single year. Yeah. Do you think it's possible when they, I mean, this is how brilliant and shrewd <laughs> the left is. This is how genius they are at tearing apart the nuclear family and destroying the great Christian t traditions of this country. 15 years ago, they plotted the course <laughs> of Easter's and they were like, Ooh. one Easter when a Democrat is in office, there is going to be a trans visibility day and an Easter Sunday that lie on the same day and Joseph Biden is going to be forced to declare a trans visibility day over Easter. Do you think that that's the yeah, case? That's, that's so funny. Was. That's definitely what yeah, it was, right? Yeah. Well, they also, uh, doesn't the calendar repeat every seven years? Yeah, that's our six, I guess, because of leap year. Oh, wait, is that true? I would assume six just because oh, you skipped a day. I would assume four. Right? This assume. guy's fucking good. Well, that's there's seven crazy. days in a week, but you skip one day because of leap year. So I would assume it's six. Well, so they but did maybe it, it's seven. I don't they know. did it in 2015 and this year also, I guess. And nobody said shit back then, did they? Because then you, then you they knew who was coming. Well, they knew the hero was coming to save the day in a year. <laughs> well, 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 who was president at the time? That's a, Maybe we should look into that. It was Barack's, but 2016 Trump. So 2015, you said 2015? We gotta see when the calendar repeated. Oh isn't, no, it was six check. years ago, that's Trump. We gotta guys, check. Guys, isn't Trans Visibility Day every day for Barack? <laughs> 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 can I get a mic check? Hold on, can I get, can I, yeah, can I get a mic check? Hold on, can I get a mic check? Hey, 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 hey Christ is king. Hey, Christ is king. That was good. Christ is king. Sucker, that was good. That was Christ is king. And whenever I say Christ is king, I need a close up on Duff. Yes. Christ is Christ king. Is king. Christ is king, Michelle Obama's king, a lot of kings. Stop, stop, stop. 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 we're doing that thing where we become too right wing on the pod. Oh, my bad, my bad, my We bad, become too bad, right wing bad. on the comedy my podcast, bad. guys. We're doing that thing. We're, we're doing that thing again, okay? So, 2021, wife. 2021, Biden. I love both of them. 2021, the Biden proclaimed the 31st of transgender visitors. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to save you. I'm trying to help you. Yo, he's already been saved. Because he is risen. Christ is king. Christ is king. I'm sorry. Oh, Say it, Doug. Yeah. We got to get Akash baptized. You ain't been trying to tell you. Say I, what? Stop trying to bathe him. Listen. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do it. <laughs> we really will do it. Anything for him not to bathe. Yo, that is true. Why don't you baptize your damn armpits and self? I got baptized when I was a baby. That was the last time. That was the last time, <laughs> was huh? It. Yeah, yeah, yeah.
Okay, <laughs> listen. So, all right, say your numbers. <laughs> his fucking he's spectrum down. His, his favorite his part data. of the pod. Is it? We're doing research. We're doing research. Bro. Forehead gets forehead in. <laughs> okay, I'm yeah. researching. Bro. No. Okay, crazy. Okay. 2021, Biden said that this was the first national trans visibility day. So basically, it was like an organization that did it. Then he picked it up in 2021 and was like, all right, now we're doing so it So he declared it in 2021. Yep. And Still his before team this, this year was too fucking stunad to look into if there was going to be Easter on a trans visibility day. Yep. So then they're in a pickle where they're like, okay, we see it's lining up on Easter. Do we double down and like make the proclamation or do we kind of just forget that we did that? And just kind Can't of you just back? change the date, like change the month? I mean, if there's one thing trans people would understand, it's change. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's April 1st now. <laughs> <laughs> and then people will be like, oh, that's yeah. nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that's, or June, isn't June LG Also, why do the month? trans people want to share with? <laughs> why? Well, because you're gay. No. June gay no, month? you got February. No, we got Juneteenth. Oh, uh, nothing, nothing close around that. So imagine Trans Visibility Day was Juneteenth. What would you do? <laughs> it's going to be some murders. <laughs> it's going to be Whoa, some geez. murders? <laughs> Damn, Jeez, man. Yeah. Oh, All the people are saying bad things about Trans Visibility Day being on Juneteenth. Oh, Sorry, God. 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 That word. God. Wow. That word. <laughs> that word. Trans Visibility Day. There we the, go. I got the, it. Every <laughs> nanofiber in Al's tongue was trying to get the word visibility <laughs> out. <laughs> I mean, we were halfway through the handshake. The word had you kept pushing though. Yeah, I, had yeah. to. I, I had respect to. that. I, had to. I respect yeah, that. Oh my right, god! Listen, so so. Busta Rhymes. Oh, we- <laughs> <laughs> Christ! <laughs> it's king. Mm-hmm. Oh man, I like it. We're sorry Shouts about out. that. Okay, all the time. Listen, so this is all we ha- all we want to ask right now is, if it was that easy for us to look this up, mm-hmm. why do you think? There are so many people that are posting about it. What do, what is the reason? Because they could also look it up. These are not dumb people. It's not like just some random, random Twitter yeah. account. They're like it feels as if they are like news organizations that are propping up this idea. Why mm-hmm. do you think that is, guys? I like money. I Wait, what do you mean? I go with money. I'm do like, you think you, you think that there is money to be made <laughs> off of outrage? <laughs> <laughs> do you think if you outrage a certain community, that they will consume your content way more? Yeah. yeah so. Wait, is that what these people are up Seems to? Seems to be how it goes. Get yeah. the mm. fuck out of here. Seems to be. Yeah, we got to do that. Yeah, we need to outrage more. Yeah. How do we outrage them? I don't know. <laughs> well, who should we outrage? Uh, everyone. Black people? <laughs> no. Yeah. But that's a really good thing to do. No, I see a lot of people make careers off of they that. They don't Crisis have the team. money. Outraging a certain group of people, right? I wish I wanted to for that because no. that was crazy. Thank you. <laughs> that was crazy. Without the laugh, it really just sounded like hate. Yeah, it really yeah, yeah. was just dying. No, no, but you're right. They broke. So we got to find out. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, because what was that little blonde chick that did it? She pissed off black people. Talk, she, Tommy Lar- Laren. Tommy Laren. Her. Say again? What happened to her? Where's she at? I mean, that's what Ben Shapiro used to do at the beginning yeah. of his career. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Where's Tommy Lair and Candace? It's an interesting, yeah, it's an interesting pivot to watch Ben Shapiro and Candace. It's funny because they're feuding, but it seems like the same thing. You start really kind of right-leaning, and then you get a little bit more toward the center, go mainstream, all of a sudden, well, let's just forget all the other stuff I said. Oh, you guys misunderstood what I said. I wasn't just feeding an agenda to make money off of dumb people. No, no, no. Hmm. You guys misunderstood. (laughs) There's a great uh, interview where where Ben is justifying why he fired Candace. Yeah. And uh, The one with uh, Ruben? Uh, yes, the yeah. month room is great. We should even pick it up and watch it. But what's f- funny is, is that, uh, and I don't know the extent to which Ben is criticized. I know he's very critical of media and media being biased. Yeah. Mm. But before you have a media platform, it's very easy to critique media. It's mm. very easy to go, look at New York Times, look what you do, and look at Washington Post, look what you do, and you're censoring free sh- speech, you're for censorship. In this conversation, he makes the argument for censorship. He calls it something else. Yeah, I forget the term I have in my phone. But I don't even think he's using the term right. But he's basically like, there's a window of ideas we accept. Yes. And we accept ideas between this, uh, this, I guess this is, if I get window, you're looking like this. So we accept ideas between here and here. And anything outside of that window, well, you're fireable. That's censorship. What? But yeah. he's acting as if this is like, a justified reason for firing people when you built your identity and platform off of no censorship and freedom of yes, speech and yeah. facts don't care about your feelings and all this shit. It's also funny that that window happens to end where his beliefs end. 
I am. Isn't that interesting? You would say well, that. Not being pro-Israel, that's where the window ends. That's what? also your specific personal belief. What? So, I just so don't you see. you can't have an opinion on your platform that is not pro a country that is not ours? Hmm. Yeah. Wait a minute. It's crazy. I wish. So I, is I the Daily the Wire an American media platform or is it an Israeli Ooh. media platform? <laughs> I'm just asking. This guy's cooking. This guy's I'm just asking. Going. Get that, yeah, get that, get I'm just, no. If, if the Duh. rule is, I'm just saying, if the cooking. rule is you cannot be critical because he has no problem being very critical of America. Yep. Sure. Critical of the left in America. Left sure. is half the country. That's you have half. no problem eviscerating half That's of the, the country. That's the current power in, party in power. But you can't criticize Israel as a country. That's just another country. Unless you're saying, and you're clearly admitting that the Daily Wire is an arm of the Israeli, I guess, media or propaganda machine. For, wait, is that? Oof. Are you manipulating the, the religious right in America? Are you manipulating Ooh. the right-wing conservatives in America and Talk selling them shit. country western movies and putting on your little cowboy hat and <laughs> fake moving in Nashville so that you could take all their money and then in the process restricting free speech, one of the core tenets of the American identity? Ben, Ben, Ben. Oof. Benjamin, Ben. What is happening? <laughs> There's trouble in paradise. <laughs> so, <laughs> what shall we do? Doug, what's wrong? Are you going to bring this up? Yeah. Doug, help us yeah, with help. this whole situation. I don't want this to be true. I want to believe that the, 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 the Daily Wire is the last bastion of free speech. Yeah, that's thought, what I want to believe. I thought he was absolutely look up free speech. That's, that's, that's what I considered. It wasn't he? No. So here's the. <laughs> 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 Overton window. Wait, are you saying that he's free in his speech? Yeah. Yes. The exact thing he's been critical of the left throughout his entire career for? His position. Tur I was sorry, term he used Overton window. Oh, yeah. uh, the Overton That's window, the yes. That's the term. Yes. So I thought the position he took between like platform and, and publisher I thought was interesting. Because mm -hmm. he's basically saying like he believes that platforms should have free speech because those are town squares. And so like corporate censorship from like Twitter and X or like uh, Instagram and shit like that. Mm. He's claiming that that would be a violation of free speech. Mm. But he thinks as a publisher, you don't necessarily need to up uphold things outside of your editorial view. Yet he was quite critical when the New York Times fired journalists for publishing Tom Cotton's article. Right. See, he was ready. I didn't know this. This <laughs> motherfucker was ready. I didn't know. I was out. I now, was going to do other things. Now, <laughs> now that is kind of, that kind of hypocritical, no? Seems a bit. Yeah. Is to is to be critical of another platform, mm -hmm. right? No, sorry, of another publisher yeah. for firing someone on the basis of their opinion for an op-ed piece mm. because that opinion did not fit in the Overton window. Yet he is firing people because their opinions do not fit in the Overton window. Now, we could vehemently disagree with the people's opinions that he has fired. I'm sure there are plenty of things that Candace has said that we think are horrible. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. But that is not the brand you built, my friend. Correct. He also and claims that it wasn't Israel, though. Like, yeah, that's at, the thing. At, at is it Israel or is it anti-Semitism? We can disagree on that. Like, I'm sure you could go at it with him on this, but he claims at the end that it has nothing to do with his position on Israel. The reason I bring up Israel, the reason I bring up Israel is because he himself has tweeted that. Um, what is that fucking skeleton looking bitch that's in media? Uh, <laughs> the fuck is her name? Uh, Ann Coulter. Ann Coulter, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ann Coulter, <laughs> Ann Coulter was doing this thing. <laughs> where instead of calling Jews Jews, she calls them globalists. <laughs> but then she was like, I think Matthew Tucker's half globalist. She just, she's funny, man. She kind of got funny. She, it. She's great. inflammatory as hell, but she's funny. So, <laughs> yo, during the debates good. when Vivek and Nikki Haley were going at it, she yeah. tweeted to her followers, guys, don't get involved. This is Hindu business, not our fight. <laughs> like, like, <laughs> it's Nikki funny. He's Christian, sick Christian. It's funny, though. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Oh. Yeah, it's so funny. But uh, but what wait, what the fuck was I just saying? Uh, the skeleton. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So Globalist, yeah. he was like, she says in incredibly uh, anti-Semitic things, but she's pro-Israel, so I can look past it all. Now, I don't think she's working for the Daily Wire at that moment, but that's his basically basic position. Hey, mm -hmm. freedom of speech is is totally down as long as you're pro-Israel. Mm -hmm. And uh, I guess Han is. Mm -hmm. Seems so, mm -hmm. Dove. I'm just saying you should be able to. I, what 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 do you think, Duff? I'll lean to the point of. We're very I, I fortunate to have no. a globalist on this podcast. Exactly. So tell I was, was going to say, 
I think the whole Candace thing is closer to a little anti-Semitism oh. play over the Israel thing. He hasn't Sorry. historically been that guy, like the spearhead of like pro-Israel things. I think it's been more of, uh, to your point, it's yeah, I think the it's platform probably. protecting that. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. He's can, you can you can you tell me? I because I've looked into it and I haven't found anything outright anti-Semitic that Candace said. Can you tell me some? Because the article she I saw- She liked the, uh, 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 very anti-Semitic trope. Which was? I think it was- She uh, liked a tweet? She liked a comment. Someone said that Rabbi Shmuley was drunk off Christian blood or something to that effect. Yeah. And then she liked it. And then apparently she had but been it, like uh, defensive of Kanye. I think she's also been like defensive of Hitler. Well, I, she had like had admired, like it's all like nuance. I, I haven't listened to every single little thing, yeah. but like the general feeling is like she was not uh, outraged by what Kanye had said and was kind of like trying to defend him mm -hmm. from the media and had said like there's like rings of people in Hollywood that are, you know, committing, you know, violence against people that are acting like gangs. That it is interesting time. timing to yeah, suddenly get offended by Kanye, isn't yeah. it? Because that was... Slavery was a choice. <laughs> if she probably didn't have a problem with that, I'm yeah. assuming, and you wouldn't... Ben Shapiro, I don't think, would have been like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Slavery is reprehensible, as was the Holocaust. Mm -hmm. But slavery is reprehensible. How can you say it was a choice? These people weren't... They didn't choose to come on these ships and do this. And why would she be getting fired now for the things Kanye said? Like, I think it was a year and a half ago. And that's also very true. Well, it was like through November that she was, like, defending him and... And obviously, I think the Israel stuff like lit it up. I, yeah, the comments. And then she was going back and forth with other co-hosts. I think it was like decorum. Also, she was like calling out Shapiro, being like, "Oh, he's annoying." Like, she's also their biggest show. That's not Ben Shapiro. Mm -hmm. She's massive. She's yeah. the biggest star on the platform that is not a owner of the platform. I think Ben is one of the owners. Mm -hmm. So you have a very tricky thing where your base, the people consuming your content, are equally drawn to her than they are to Ben. Potentially could go even more. You might have to nip that before she can take a stranglehold of the identity of your platform. Mm -hmm. So I think that this is, it's not just, oh, you said something bad. I think it's a trend and seeing this unstoppable force because Candace is unstoppable. Life tour announcement, a uh, few things. Las Vegas, we had a second show, okay? That's on May 25th. The pre-sale for that is Thursday, April 4th, 9 a.m. local time. The password is Andrew. Um, thank you guys so much, Vegas. Also, Houston, we'll see you this weekend. Uh, Dallas, we'll see you this weekend. And uh, Nashville, Austin, Charlotte, and Phoenix, the late show. We had a second show in Charlotte and another show in Phoenix. We'll see you guys in a few weeks coming up. And uh, can't wait for NYC, baby. Cannot wait for that. TheAndrewSchultz.com for tickets. Peace. Also, guys, few dates. More importantly, please keep checking out the special Gaslit. It's on YouTube. It's already at 1.7 million views on YouTube. I think it's at 1.7 on X as well, but keep pushing it, keep getting it out to as many people as possible. Thank you so much, everybody who's seen it. If you have seen it, we'll share it with more people. If you have not seen it, please check it out. Now, a couple quick dates. I am in Tempe, Arizona, April 11th through the 13th. I'm in Denver, Colorado, April 18th through the 20th. Los Angeles shows are sold out. More shows will be added soon, but in the meantime, those two shows, Gaslit. Also, if you want merch, you can go to my website, all these dates at akashsing.com. Everything is there. Thank you, guys. Love y'all. Thank you. Yeah. Say what you want about Candace. Yeah. She's not yeah. afraid of nobody. She will say whatever the She's fuck she smart wants to say. She will debate any yeah. single person. She'll go out there and do it, mm -hmm. right? Ben Shapiro is dating co uh, debating college kids. Yeah. Let's just be honest, yeah. right? It's like anytime he debates somebody who's like worthy, he either gets washed or bare minimum stalemate. I've never seen him actually win a debate against somebody who's like educated in the matter, right? Mm -hmm. So I think he can body guys like Finkelstein. I'm sorry. He won't do it. Finkelstein has been asking him nonstop. He refused to do it. Mm, scared. He is scared. Of course he's scared. But now you Finkelstein are... has dedicated his life to this. I don't think Ben has dedicated his life to this. But Finkelstein has been calling think him out well to against debate. With, with Destiny. I mean, they were kind of on the Destiny same page. Destiny? Yeah, a, I mean, come on. Smart guy plays dude. guitar on the internet. Smart dude. <laughs> the, 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 smart fact dude. That, the fact that, no, I'm not saying he's not smart, but I, I'm saying he has not dedicated his life to this. The fact that he's just picking up this hobby and he's out there debating the top dudes in this realm. I, uh, I don't know his content, but I would assume Destiny's life is not dedicated to this. His name is Destiny. It's a YouTube handle that I assume he uses for other things beyond this. So if Ben Shapiro is stalemating a guy who doesn't dedicate himself to this, that's not great for Ben Shapiro. I think they were on the same side. Oh. On, was on Destiny that part. was debating Finkelstein. But um, everything else, yeah. I mean, Destiny knows how to debate.
Yeah, no, he's and he will read the stuff and he is is amazing retention. Every time I see him, he can, has like this great recall. So mm -hmm. it seems like if he reads something, it's locked in forever. Doesn't matter. That being said, I, what, were, what was the argument? What were we just talking about? Ben Shapiro getting washed and Candace Owens is getting. Yeah, it's an yeah. unstoppable force. So mm -hmm. I think what they're doing is they were worried that she was a runaway train with the with the brand. That's and she was also souring his reputation within the brand. Within the brand. Mm -hmm. uh, so you have uh, the person okay. who owns it, who should be the leader of it, mm -hmm. who is going to lead the identity of the brand, right, is now wavering in their opinions on the, well, not, in their influence within the brand. And there's this new source that is changing the course of the brand. Mm -hmm. The reason you start a media platform is you want to have some control and power. Nobody starts a media platform and he's like, I love the news. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you want to, in, in the most altruistic sense, you want to... Uh, influence the course of the country that you are in, right? Yeah. And you want the good ideas to win. That's the best case scenario. Mm -hmm. What it most likely is, is, hey, we got to manipulate these people into thinking what we want so that you know we can live in a place that is beneficial for us. And I think that's what the Koch brothers do. And that's what I'm sure Peter Thiel does. And that's what I'm sure the fucking MSM, what is it, Bill Gates does. And that's mm -hmm. what I'm sure the Washington Post is for Jeff Bezos. Like that's the point of media is control. <clears throat> And they were losing control of their platform. Yeah. So consumers of Daily Wire, are they like looking at them like they're funny in the light now? Like, yo, you guys fired. That's what I would think. It seems like it's split. My my concern about I think the biggest concern about the Daily Wire is that their consumers, Ben doesn't represent their consumers. Back when it was just liberal versus conservative, he was this incredible soundbite machine for conservative talking points. And he had, and he was brave and he would say anything and he would go out there and he'd interview a trans person and fucking rip them apart. Like he would, he basically had every single nugget ready, locked and loaded so that all these people who are conservative were now like, oh, you've done the intellectual heavy lifting mm -hmm. for me. Great, give me all those talking points. I can use them. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> now there seems to be a little bit of, a, especially after October 7th, a little bit of division yeah. in the conservative party. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the Democrat party. And the sure. Democrat, for sure. Mm -hmm. yeah. So there's a little bit of division, right? And now you're seeing this culture war that's happening within politics. Because the reality is that the right-wing conservative Christians that were following Ben were following because he was giving them the artillery to be the most eloquent, articulate conservative that they mm -hmm. could be. Mm -hmm. Well, he's not giving them the arguments for what they feel now. Yeah. And for what some of them feel now. And Candace might be giving them the arguments for what some of them feel now. Mm -hmm. So you got to nip that in the bud. But he's not representative of this middle America, salt of the earth guy. Mm -hmm. The guy, I think he grew up in L.A., Mm -hmm. went to Harvard. Like he never lived a life that is representative of them at all. He has no clue who they are, what they are. Does Candace yeah. represent them though? I'm not saying Candace does. I don't know her background. What I'm saying is she is, she was representing what they needed when they needed arguments. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now the culture war has shifted. Now they might need justification for Christianity. There's an attack on Christianity. Trans day is on the same day as Easter. Mm. Christians mm -hmm. might feel a little bit like they need more representation. They're not going to get that from the Jewish guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's mm -hmm. a good point. I'm just, this so, is yeah. kind of how I'm seeing this map out. So I don't think it's that she said something wrong. I think that she was running away with that platform. Wow. And it was a matter of fucking time. And there's nothing that he could do about it. He can't beat her on ideas. He can't beat her on being thought provoking. He's way less brave now that he has a media conglomerate. She doesn't have a media and conglomerate. And he's tied mm -hmm. to a belief. He is pro Israel. Candace doesn't seem to be, she doesn't have a core belief that she will not waver on, whether right or wrong or whatever. She'll go with the wind. She will, she, she, the, the president the of France's wife is a man. And she's she's argue the she fuck us. <laughs> she, we will say anything. Yeah. <laughs> See, was, no, son, I'm saying, but we're a comedy platform that's saying shit to be funny. She is a news platform yes. that's like, I think it's a guy. And there's she, she yeah. says it's hilarious. She goes, I'll stake my whole career on this one claim. She also, <laughs> like, yeah, that is the level of confidence I've never had in anything. Wow. That is beautiful. Wow. But yeah. I genuinely, I think, that, that's my thing. I think Daily Wire was terrified that she was running away with the platform. Yeah, well, yeah. And then, but again, he you can't, if you, he can't say anything anti-Israel. He's got to be very, she doesn't have that, those guards 
guardrails. Yeah, she sure. Says so the fuck she wants at all times. Anti-Israel is 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 maybe even a, a a word we could change, like critical of the the country Israel. Okay, mm-hmm. and it is a, just because I don't want I don't want to put any stigma on anything. Like every country, America should be criticized. Yeah, Israel should be criticized. Yeah, Saudi Arabia should be criticized. England should be criticized. Sri Lanka should be fine. And, and if you, a lot of people probably even listening don't even have Jewish friends. If you had Jewish friends, you would know they are more critical of Israel than any of you guys are because you don't even know much about fucking Israel. Yeah. So the idea that there's this like unanimous support and every single Jewish person feels the exact same way about Israel is yeah. not the case at all. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But there is, there does seem to be that hypersensitivity when there is critique of Israel that it is turned into anti-Semitism. That now, was... some people are critical of Israel because they are anti-Semites. Absolutely. And some people are critical of Israel because they're just- There's things to criticize. Things to criticize. Frankly. Mm-hmm. So that's Fair? the article I sure. read. And I could also say, yes, we know that Ben Shapiro probably has a bias towards support. There must be something there, but do you think then that it still means everything that he's built and supported for the conservative American community is just thrown out because he still has this little bias? Like, no, I think he could still be a you know a great representative for everything. I really believe that he sticks to American values, believes in in all things conservatism, and yeah, he has a little bias, but. He's done a pretty good job to take the other Here's what it and undermines. Stay consistent. Here's what right? it undermines. I think he's learning the limitations of his conservatism. And it undermines the thing that it was built on, which was seemingly presented, front facing, free speech. We're not squashing ideas here just because we don't agree with them, et cetera. Now you seem to be doing that. So that does yeah. tear away at that entire foundation. Yeah. So the idea. Now, yeah. what else are you kind of compromised or wavering on? Now I look at you as the pro Israel. A new source. And that's your design. You didn't have You didn't have enough confidence in the American system and the fundamental core tenet of free speech. You didn't have the confidence in it to just let it happen. You pretended you did Ooh. when it was beneficial to you. Ooh. But once yeah. there was a moment where having that true free speech could take your platform and lead it in a different direction, you immediately did what every platform does, which is control the speech. And now you're just learning what it is to own a media company. And owning a media company is not free speech. Low key, that's why Elon might be the GOAT. Now, granted, it's different when you have a, what is it called, a publisher? Platform, or platform a pop, or, publisher. Sorry, so I might have messed up those words. But like, Elon is literally allowing free speech. And it's fucking chaos on Twitter. It's fire. Mm-hmm. It's fire. But it's chaos. But that's what free speech is. It's mm-hmm. fucking chaos. Mm-hmm. Now, he's saying that he has some people on the platform or on the that he publishes that have anti-Israel ideas or ideas that are critical of Israel that he disagrees Within with. Within the window. Exactly. Yeah. Which is censorship. It's censorship, censorship, censorship. So you cannot act like you are pro free speech completely, like you're an absolutist. You're no longer an absolutist. You are a person that owns a business and you are willing to have censorship in order to uh, make money. Simple mm-hmm. as that. But he said that he was like, we wouldn't have someone on the on that we published that has like staunchly pro-abortion ideals. Like we wouldn't contract that person. We wouldn't pay them. So yeah, so you're a phony. Mm. Mm-hmm. I that, the thing I couldn't figure out is whether or not he was a that's a great speech, response. A free speech <laughs> absolutist. I couldn't figure out like his position historically. Maybe, maybe he is a free speech absolutist. Maybe he's not. I don't know. But his platform is a propaganda machine for his beliefs. God damn. Mm-hmm. Which is what media platforms are. But now don't be critical for the New York Times leaning left mm-hmm. or Washington Post protecting Amazon. You can no longer do that. And you have done that in your career. Mm. Yeah, because I, I looked up the anti-Semitic and I didn't know she liked, I don't even honestly understand the context of it liking. It was a dumb thing to like. I, yeah, I dumb thing to like, joke. but what she I, said, I think it was a, kind of a what joke. she said, I did not see. There's this idea that exists, not from most Jewish people I know, Dove has never said this, but the idea of being critical, being anti-Israeli government is somehow anti-Semitic. Mm. And the article I read literally was like, the anti-Semitic hate speech of Candace Owens saying what's happening to the people in Gaza is, is a genocide committed by the government of Israel. That's not anti-Semitic, that's not. That's an opinion that there is some fact to support the opinion. Whether you agree or disagree, it's an opinion rooted now, in something you're if saying. I'm gonna defend, if I'm gonna defend Jewish people here is that Every anti-Semite is critical of Israel. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So yes. the knee-jerk reaction is when you hear critique of it, you're like, oh, this is just how they frame their anti-Semitism so it doesn't seem as bad. Yeah. So, every anti-Semitic person yeah. is anti-Israel. Every person who's anti-Israeli government is not anti-Semitic. Oh, 100%. Mm-hmm. But I understand that knee-jerk protective Fair. 
instinct, yeah. Yeah. right? And especially historically what the people have gone through. There is that knee-jerk protective instinct. Anytime you hear these buzzwords, you're like, uh-uh, oh, oh, here it comes. This is how yeah. it happens. And to their credit, I when October 7th happened and I saw some of the videos of people in Australia chanting like gas, it was like, oh, this anti-Semitism is a real fucking mm. thing. Yeah. And I, I always just kind of was like, as a minority, I think we're just like, that shit, ain't, that shit is real. Yeah. But just because I acknowledge that that's real and that's fucked up doesn't mean I'm automatically going to support everything that this government does. That mm. government does not represent all of you. You do not stand for what that government does. These are two different different entities. Doug, yeah. I'm curious, are there any Jewish people that feel what's happening in Gaza is a genocide? Uh, there's plenty of the not in my I've name. I've heard plenty of Jewish people say it's fucked up. I but, hate this. Yeah, there's, very, there's a lot of Jews that are very, but it's, like uh, we, we've, we've gone through these opinions before. and they can suck it. But uh, mm -hmm. let me go back to just with Ben and one thing. Yeah. I can agree, sure, He's shown with his platform, he is not the free speech absolutist that maybe he says he is, agree completely. But if having one bias for an anomaly of an insane year that's happened where it feels like the world is against one people uh, or just they've, they've felt like really alone in this position, to say that he's not done and stayed consistent on a lot of true American conservative values, and that's still a, a big part of his brand, like, uh, that's where I disagree. But I I'll still know, admit the bias. I don't know what you just said. I you said that. I, I really did. did. What you he's just not, said. He's he's really not did. Not speech absolutist. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's not a good conservative. Just fucking gobble. Is he not a good conservative? What? what fucking Is he not a good conservative? Gook just came hey, out of his head. We got a cam on him. Can we just put an Israeli flag over his fucking mouth the whole time he's talking? Hold on, hold on. First of all, first of all. Is he not a good conservative? Hold on. Jews just became conservative October 8th. <laughs> this idea that like you know what a good conservative is is bullshit. The, you don't understand what it means to be a good conservative. Yeah. Also, what it is to be like half of my family is conservative and like traditional, like old school American Republican, right? They're way different than religious Christian conservatives that are different than maybe Catholic. Southern Baptist Orleans, conservative, like, different things. There's all You're these talking different LA, New them. York Jews that just became conservative October That's what 8th. I'm saying. So you I'm guys don't about, know. Buddy, buddy, where else are the Jews? <laughs> I grew up in Texas. I didn't even know how to tell a guy was Jewish. <laughs> Do you know how many Jews love, support Trump, love and yes, support is, everything? That, but like, that what are we talking because about? because of the support of Israel yeah. and, and yes, they were thank critical. You. And you've told me that exactly. The Obama's thing. administration. Also the rich ones. Okay, okay. But it doesn't matter. Those things don't matter. Those things don't matter. Don't 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 spiral here. Don't spiral here. The, 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 what I'm trying to say is what it means to be a good conservative. It's like saying uh, this is the, the most extreme example, but it's just like, uh, yeah, like I mostly didn't fuck kids. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, that's what you're saying. Like, he's pretty good. It's like, no, yeah. if you are. Remember, Ben is the conservative. I'm not talking about like he can't waver. It's like finding out Dr. Umar Johnson had sex with a white girl. You go, what? What? Even one would make you discredit everything. Everything. So this. But can't you just do, like wait, to what on, Mark said about on, being an hold absolutist? Hold on. Hold on. Wavering on the most important conservative point of his career. Which is censorship. That's an important and free point. speech. This is fair. what his career fair, is built fair. on. He is a journalist, a person in media, and completely wavering and being a hypocrite on it. To me, doesn't make you go, oh, well, it's just whatever. It just shows an extreme bias. And that extreme bias is something that I think the public should be aware of. Mm. I'm curious. We don't know the details of Candace's contract, but do you think she has a case for like wrongful termination? I don't. I, I, don't think, even I think, think they mutually agree. Yeah, I think yeah. we don't know if she got fired for sure. I think that's all still kind of murky. Maybe oh. she left, maybe she got fired, whatever. But it's clear this was an issue for Ben. And I think that's what our issue is with him. Because again, you position yourself as the absolutist of this thing, the beacon of free speech. Mm -hmm. Now suddenly you have a problem with somebody who doesn't agree with something you believe in. Yeah. So Ooh. that's where I think our issue is. What was his Listen. thing with Cotton, the New York Times guy? So Tom Cotton wrote an op-ed piece that the New York Times really published. Really conservative last name, to be honest. With you. <laughs> <laughs> and the New York Times fired two editors for publishing it mm -hmm. because they felt like the piece was not in their, what is that window? Overton, Overton window. window. Overton, Overton window. So they fired two the editors. And I believe Ben really 
you know, ran them the riot act for doing that. Mm -hmm. Like this is censorship. This is breaking down free speech. The op ed is not representative of the New York Times. It is a editorial piece. It's this is literally a section for not the opinions of the New York Times. And uh, he, I think, rightfully criticized them. I would love to see, even if it's a horrible article we all disagree with, it'd be nice to see these different ideas out there yeah. to get the sense that like, we do have this freedom of speech protected by the media. So I think he rightfully was very critical. And now he's admitting that he has an Overton window and that pieces that are outside of that Overton window or talent outside of that Overton window will not be hired by his, uh, what is it, is, uh, him as a publisher. Mm -hmm. If he had said- So to me, sorry, just so, so, so to me, that is blatant bias and hypocrisy. And he's made a career calling people out for being blatantly biased and hypocritical. You know, if you want to have no uh, standards to uphold, be a comedian. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Just be a clown like us. It's very easy. But if you want to rile people up based on their conservatism and what is this country happening? Like freedom of speech. We got to fight for the ideals of this American people and make all your fucking cowboy hat movies. Yeah. To specifically talk to a group of people. We know exactly what's going on. Mm -hmm. Guy never been on a horse in his life. <laughs> right? They know exactly what's happening. And then you fall short of your own expectations for other publishers. I think it's I think it's fair game to be criticized. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. I don't remember what I was going to say, but yeah, I agree well, with that. So. And even if it's not, we don't we don't care. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you, you know what I mean. Yeah, that's the best. You know what I mean? Like Christ that. is king, though. Yeah, <laughs> Christ is king. Yo, but Hashem is dope too, man. What? Yo, Hashem is dope. Allah. Sure. Vishnu. Nah, he, Vishnu. Yeah. Yeah. Ganesh. I'll take Ganesh. Both. I'll take, Ganesh I'll take is on both fire. Do you know what I mean? What's another one? Ben Shapiro. Luxury. Fire. I mean, mm -hmm. if he makes another rap track, you know, <laughs> yeah, he's yeah. back. He might be back. Joe, that's the thing. If he, if he said it with, if he battled Candace, that's what I'm saying. If you said it with bars, we would have been like, yo, Ben, whatever. Where's his rap about Israel? Mm. She, oh. she just needs to Bombs say. over bags. No. <laughs> <laughs> we need a rap. Man, what are you saying? He's to be like, yo, we hired Candace because of DEI and we're repealing our DEI, so we're no longer can, gonna have can, her on. How hard is it? Yeah. How just, hard is it to like, just say something genius? We hired a black woman because we needed a quota. Yeah. And actually, we're not doing quotas anymore. So and then his base go. would be like, finally, <laughs> learn how to appeal to your base. Yes, come on. Yeah, man. honestly, that would have been perfect. <laughs> I mean, how did he not see this coming? Bruh. He doesn't like, care. Like, you appeal to right-wing Christians. Of course, they're going to follow the girl who's going, yo, Christ is king. I ride for Christians, and we're not letting anybody talk shit about Christians. I'm going to defend them. If of he course, they're, they're not going to ride for you. I, he had a bunch of them. He had Matt Walsh, like, who's, like, super Christian. Yeah, but, and Walsh got the trans thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But he wasn't, uh, like, going at Ben or, like, attacking the, the publisher. What was he saying? Well, he was just like, he just does his shit and just talks his thing within the window. But if you want to talk yeah, about hate speech, he said something like, I, I think if you're a doctor who performs gender affirming surgery on a trans kid, you should be executed. Yo, I agree with that. <laughs> <Yo>. <laughs> I agree. Yo, Matt, shout out you. Christ is king. I do. I do. Day of all days, dude. Yo, 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 the Tuesday after Trans Visibility Day yeah. is a really difficult day. He, also, <laughs> he, okay. he wants to make him visible so he can handle yeah. business. <laughs> I'm just saying, Matt Walsh got some bars, bro. He does have some bars. I didn't know what a woman was before I watched this documentary, What is a Woman? You know, luckily I was fucking women. Thank God. Yeah, um, that was a shot in the dark. Close shot call. in the dark my whole life. I done married a woman without even fucking knowing. Thank God I watched the documentary. Now I know she's a woman. Before I watched it, I would have no clue. Right? Yeah, that's a piece. You, know, you know how terrified I was watching that with my male or female partner? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Until I learned out she was a woman? Yeah, bro. How do you think fucking all these presidents feel. How well, do they feel? Do you, the fucking French guy, what's his name? Macron. How do you think he feels watching what is Yeah, part? and then we're criticizing him when he never watched Matt Wall's documentary before <laughs> he married true, his man wife. That's true, uneducated. He yes. could have just watched ignorant. the documentary. He would have never married his teacher when he was 15 <laughs> that he was getting molested by. Oh, that's the problem. He was like, yo, what is a woman? What when is he? Was 14. He was too young to know. He's like, oh, what is? And now yeah. he's way older. He's like, oh, shit. Right? I mean, she was a math teacher. Ain't no woman can actually do that. <laughs> I don't know if she was, but for the joke, it makes sense. Okay, what I'm trying to say is Daily Wire's back. Mm -hmm. Daily Wire's back, bro. Yeah, back. I listen. Daily Wire is Daily Wire is back. Mm. It was not back when we were starting this podcast and we were being critical of Ben, but now that we know Matt Walsh, <laughs> yo, Matt, shout out you. Okay, I need the new documentary. What's Matt's next documentary? What is a man? What mm. is man? Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Don't hit. What else? What else? What else we got? What is a country? Okay. <laughs> if he's trying to get fired, if he's trying to get fired from Daily Wire, he's gonna try. Out, what is a country? What, is a country? <laughs> <laughs> what even really is it? What is a country? <laughs> that was good, That's buddy. That's a documentary. Yo, that was good, out, dude. Matt that was good. Fucking, that yo, was when good. are we getting Matt Walsh on the pod, yo? Shit. I need Matt Walsh yeah. on the pod. I need full. I need. I need to break down full anatomy. But we got to be in drag, though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, to see if he can handle it. No, see if he can tell. <laughs> yeah. hey, like a who's a woman? Yeah. Who's a woman? Yeah. Say it. Which one of us? Yeah. Dude, that's oh, a great man. idea. Yeah. Anyway, shout out 50 Cent, bro. Yo, shout out 50. Yo, shout yeah. out. That's fire, dude. Yo, shout out 50. Listen, shout out uh, LA, man. LA, thank you so much for having us. The forum, that yeah. was crazy. That looked shout fire. out Dove, Vala, Shifty, Mark, Derek, Tanya, the whole squad. Uh, Cheryl and Rob, just the whole squad, everybody put on that fucking show. That was that was incredible. That was so fucking cool, man. Yo, yeah, thank you. Yeah. Fine. LA, Forum. Yeah, it was What crazy. are you thinking when you are in the green room? Every comedian we've ever loved is there. I saw you had the, you showed the sign of all the people that were oh, the Forum yeah, there. Yeah, Chappelle's yeah. the first name that pops out. Yeah, yeah. What are you thinking when you're, what's the moment? Is there a moment where you're like, holy fuck, I'm about to go do this? I'll be honest with you. I'll be honest with you. I... I got there a day early because I wanted to work out like some local shit. And yeah. I went up at the store in the improv. Mm-hmm. And everything local that I was trying to do was bombing mm. horrendously. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so up until like 15 minutes before I went up at the forum, I'm like, I have no clue what I'm going to talk right. about outside of the hour that I'm mm-hmm. going to do. and uh, Which is a big thing. Yeah, the hour's the I thing I'm most dude, proud of. I have no idea what I'm talking about outside of this hour. No, no, no. no, 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 no. You're right. Yeah. I know what you mean, but... But, but it's like, I, you know me, I like to kind of like, uh, yeah. you know, talk about what's going on or like yeah. do some local stuff. Like, it's just fun to start it yeah. and then we get into the hour. And um, and, I'm, and I'm going up because I was working on this stuff and I was trying to do stuff about like what I've heard about LA, you know, the crazy homelessness and all these other things that are like happening in the city, the city like falling apart. Like you see that in the news a lot. Mm-hmm. And I was working it out the night before and like, it just wasn't hitting. And I, and I remember talking to Mark, I was like, yo, I don't think the people from here, either one, feel that's what's happening here, or two, want to admit it's happening here. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, it's kind of like New York where like, outside of New York, everybody's like, the migrant crisis is crazy and everything is happening. But New Yorkers are like, I ain't changed that much. Yeah. Like, yeah. So after bombing for four shows mm. with all the local shows, I'm just like, it's got to be something else. And that's where the Diddy the idea Diddy came through. And I was like, oh, it's fucking Diddy. Everybody's thinking about this. And then I was like, fuck it. Let's just try it. I didn't get to try it the night before. Oh, oh yeah. wow. So, <laughs> so I, didn't get, I didn't get to try it the night before. I was like, fuck it. Let's go. Maybe this will work. Yeah, I don't yeah, know. Yeah. And, uh, and that shit just went over and the crowd was fucking awesome and uh, you brought the house down it was that cool shit. It, it was, was cool you, you put together an awesome show Dove. thank you so much yeah. Christ is king yeah. Christ is king Christ is king Jesus Christ, 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 Christ. 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 and um, and then yeah then we put out that that, uh, that Diddy clip <laughs> you wanna know something crazy so yesterday uh, we put out I posted the Diddy clip right I posted it the caption doesn't show up and you can't leave any comments I take it down immediately Charlamagne hits me. He's like, yo, what happened to that clip? I I tried to share it and it did, nothing worked. And I was like, I'm gonna try to post it again. No caption, no comments. I immediately, I'm like, Diddy is, <laughs> is blocking me. <laughs> so this, 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 so post, it was like, uh, Instagram won't let me post yeah, this. Yeah, I'm like, it won't let me post. Like, what the fuck's going on? And I'm like, yo, holy shit, has Diddy connected with Meta and like put his name? So we take his name out the caption, it still doesn't work. I put Puff, that doesn't work. We try to upload it on a burner, it doesn't work. And I'm like, Fuck! They flagged the clip itself, so I so even other people can't post. You think Zuckerberg went to a freak off? Here? So he was at the freak off. That's what I'm thinking. Dead you, think, ass. you think he got Zuckerberg on tape, bro? Pro, one hundred percent with the Quest. Yes, the Vision Pro. Dang, shit! He Google's is Instagram down. Yeah. <laughs> And it's like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nah. Nah. But who took it down? Yeah. Me. That's right. No, did he? No, did he? Oh, fuck. Yeah, 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 yeah. Too Come much on. self-importance. Yeah, I think yeah, I was too much self-importance. Bro. Damn, man, yeah, damn, damn. I got to be more humble. <laughs> and then I can yeah. see the world for what it really is. Yeah, exactly, dude. <laughs> anyway, so uh, then we went it up and then fucking, you know, 50 obviously blown it up. and I saw it from him before you. Isn't that crazy? What, uh, well, Shout out to that. Shout out to that. That's crazy, yeah. Yeah. I thought it was a fun joke. Yeah, it was wild. Great. Yeah. Fantastic. I love you, Meek. 
<laughs> I love you, Meek. I do love Meek, man. I, I do love Meek. He's I a, do love he's Meek. He's a good sport. Yeah, Meek is a good sport. He might not be good about this one, but I love him. <laughs> but who else going to be on Diddy's lap? You know what I mean? <laughs> who else going to be on yeah. Diddy's lap? In a bit? <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, okay. yeah, the show was just fucking great. Thank this you so it. much, everybody who came out, man. That was fucking awesome. I wonder and if rappers do that. What a like, night. Where like rappers are like, oh, I don't necessarily want to put this person's name in a rap, but it happens to rhyme, you know, with this word, so yeah. I have to put it in. Yeah. Basically the equivalent, you know what I mean? It was just the best thing for the joke. Yo, thanks, bro. Yeah. Yeah, yeah they have done that. Uh, it's just the best I mean? thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Can I, when Dream Chasers comes after you, Mark's gonna be like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We yeah. all do this, right? All right, guys, let's take a break for a second because uh, listen, you're either taking supplements, okay, so that you can improve your health, improve your strength, improve your memory, improve all functions of your daily life. Uh, and you're either taking them from a company that is not putting out the best quality stuff, they're not even testing their stuff, you don't even know if it actually works, or you're not taking them at all and you don't know how your life could be improved. Momentus is gonna change all that. You're going with Momentus, you're going with the best one. Let me tell you why you know it's the best, is because the billion dollar corporations that truly need the best results. I'm not talking about some bodega bullshit. I'm talking about the billion dollar corporations. We're talking about NFL teams. We're talking about the US military. We're talking about the NCAA. The corporations and the organizations that need optimal performance are going with Momentus. Simple as that, that's all you need to know. That is all you need to know, but I will tell you more, okay? Momentus creatine uses creatine monohydrate, the gold standard in creatine supplementation. It is full informed sport and NSF certified in sports certifications, meaning it contains no banned substances and no toxic contaminants like heavy metals or pesticides. What you see on the label is exactly what you get, okay? There is creatine. Also, the grass-fed whey protein isolate. Protein is a fundamental macronutrient that is essential for muscle growth, development, and recovery, peak physical performance in everything your body does. It needs ample amounts of protein. This is the high quality protein that you need, okay? It provides the essential amino acids that support muscle repair and growth after intense physical activity. If you're lifting, you need to supplement your body with that protein and they got you right here. I'm telling you, if the US military, if the NFL, and if the NCAA is using momentous, if teams associated with them and the US military itself is using momentous, this is the one that you want to use. Momentous is now also offering listeners of Flagrant up to 36% off your first subscription order. And if you don't want to subscribe, you can still get 20% off creatine and protein and all of my favorite products. You go to livemomentous.com slash flagrant and use the code flagrant at checkout. Now let's get back to the show. All right, guys, we gotta take a break for a second because you're not getting good enough sleep and Helix is gonna help you with that, okay? I know there's all these apps out here. There's all these different things that can measure your sleep and yada, yada, you gotta get better sleep, you gotta get better sleep, yeah. But how are they helping you get better sleep? They're not a bed. You know what is? Helix. Helix is the mattress company that's going to make sure you are getting the best sleep in your life. How are they going to do that? Because they're going to help you select a mattress that works for you the way you sleep and is going to benefit you the best. Okay, then you're going to get that 100% sleep score. It's an absolute no brainer, okay? The Helix lineup offers 20 unique mattresses, okay? Including, they got the award-winning Lux and Ultra Premium Elite collections. They have the Helix Plus, this is a mattress designed for big and tall sleepers, it's very important. And then they have the Helix Kid mattresses designed for growing bodies and endorsed by child sleep and medical experts. So this is how you will find out which one works for you. You're gonna take a simple Helix sleep quiz and you find your perfect mattress in under two minutes. Two minutes for the best sleep of your life. Is it worth it two minutes for the best sleep of your life? I think so, okay? You find your personalized mattress, and you know what? It is shipped straight to your door free of charge. Helix knows there's no better way to test out a new mattress than by sleeping on it in your own home. And that's why they offer a 100-night trial and a 10 to 15-year warranty to try out your new Helix mattress. Think about that. They're sending it to your home, and you have 100 nights to actually try it out. You've gone and tried a mattress out in a mattress store. What happens? It feels good there. You get back home. Oh, it's too soft. Oh, it's too hard. Yes. It wasn't the environment you used to sleeping in. Maybe it was something you were laying down in for a second. Helix has got your back with this. I am telling you, you got this. This is no 
no-brainer for you, and it comes with a 10 to 15-year warranty. Listen, everybody's unique, and everyone sleeps differently. That's why Helix has several different mattress models to choose from, each designed for specific sleep positions and feel preferences. They have models with memory foam layers to provide optimal pressure relief if you sleep on your side, okay? They have models with a more responsive foam to cradle your body for essential support in stomach and back sleeping positions, plus enhanced cooling features to keep you from overheating at night. That is absolutely huge. That is the future of mattresses. Obviously, you know, as the temperature goes up in your room, your sleep can be greatly affected. The fact that they're even thinking in this way is genius. And if your spine needs some extra TLC, they got you. Every Helix mattress has a hybrid design combining individually wrapped steel coils in the base with the premium foam layers on top. It's the perfect combination of comfort and support. So, what I suggest is you take that Helix sleep quiz and get the perfect mattress for you. I took the quiz, actually. I got a Helix mattress. I'm genuinely sleeping better on it. Uh, it takes like two minutes. They just ask you like, what you, position do you sleep in? How often do you move around? How about your partner? How do they sleep, etc. Very quick, great mattress. I got the Dusk Lux and it's fantastic and it feels great. My wife fucking loves it, sleeps like a baby on it. Great mattress. Listen, you don't wanna take my word for it, that's fine, but what you will do is you will take the word of GQ and Wired Magazine because Helix has been awarded the number one mattress picked by both of those mag magazines. It is even recommended by multiple leading chiropractors and doctors of sleep medicine as the go-to solution for improving your sleep. So Helix is offering 20% off all mattresses and two free pillows for our listeners. Go to helixsleep.com slash flagrant. That is helixsleep.com slash flagrant. This is their best offer yet and it won't last long with Helix Better sleep starts now. Let's get back to the show. <laughs> Did you have fun, Mark? How was, Bro, how was, was it being on stage? It was crazy. Crazy. I couldn't figure out the turn it up thing. I was like, can they actually not hear us or are they fucking with us? Yeah. It yeah. was like, by the end, it was fine. And then I was like, all right, don't heckle. Yeah. And then they were like, turn it up. And I was like, oh, now they're just being assholes. Yeah. Now they're just, no it's a soccer. I was so confused. Yeah. Mm. Five people went up there. We were like, no, it's fine. What the fuck? Yeah. Is this? <laughs> yeah. And to touch Andrew's mic before he comes nah. on is a heart attack. But like, outside of that, how was the experience on stage? Bro, like, it was crazy. Yeah. Like, this one was more fun because when we did Toronto, I was just in a blackout the whole time. Yeah, so the first time ever doing arena. Yeah, yeah. like I like passed out on the plane and then woke up on the plane back. And everything <laughs> yeah. else was just like, no idea what happened. Unless I did something wrong, in which case I remember everything. Don't come after me. But uh, <laughs> while we were there, like I, I was actually able to enjoy it. To where, like, like the first time you do a comedy club, you're like, holy shit, this is crazy. Yeah. And then you do it a couple times, you're like, oh, I'm actually able to be present in it. Yeah. The first time you do a theater, you're like, holy shit. Is this fuck, your this first crazy. time ever? You never opened in an arena? Nope. Never been in an arena. That's outside. a. Yeah. The Toronto was first arena. Yeah. Yep. You never stepped. So, what is that like? Oh, that's crazy, bro. I did an arena before him. Yeah, he did. Yo, <laughs> yo, that's, yo, that's, that's crazy. crazy. Yeah. That's, that's crazy. crazy. <laughs> Let's go. No, <laughs> that's fire. Which I understand. Like, yeah. I want the first time I do an arena to be when I do an arena. But. Yeah. The f that means the first time you're doing an arena, yeah. you're doing the arena. It's your yeah. show. Everything yeah. is on your shoulders. Yeah, what do you think when you walk out there? Well, I mean, I think in like the in Toronto, the first time is like, okay, what is the pacing going to be? Mm -hmm. You always hear people talk about that in bigger venues. Like, are and you going to have to go slower and these types of things? Did you go slower? What did you do? How'd you uh, I, I, to me, it didn't feel slower because I'm always trying to adjust to the energy I'm getting. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't feel slow because... It, it feels on pace mm. with what I'm getting from them. Right, right, right. Does that make sense? Mm, but yeah. yeah, so I don't really, I didn't really feel like, oh, I'm talking much slower, et cetera. Yeah, yeah. But, but yeah, just the wave of energy that you yeah. get, like mm. a big laugh is just this. I think uh, Duval said it best. He's like, you know, it feels like, uh, like everybody's hugging you at the same time. And it mm. is just like an intense fucking feeling, man. And also just, yeah, seeing that made people laugh and like, when you when you can see the bodies move mm -hmm. and you kind of like catch them in your periphery, like the the, the movement, like somebody laughing, just going, yeah. like, ha, ha, something like that. Like, I don't know, to me, it's very easy to just kind of not lock into one person and just kind of like see everybody at the same time. Mm -hmm. And then those moments will lock you into one specific person that's really enjoying something. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you can get locked into the person not enjoying. Yeah. And that's the thing to fight, but... Yeah, it was just it was just awesome, and the forum is a dope fucking room. Was yeah. that bigger than Toronto? It looked in the pictures. It, looked. it felt smaller in the way that the building is shaped. Uh -huh. It's really intimate. It's so, like some of these arenas are are go go. 
No, I was gonna say the big difference. Also, there's no suites. This is this building's from like 1967 or 68. Ah. Same architect as MSG, yeah. so mm -hmm. it's round and not long and ovally. Oh, okay. The suite but, thing is 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 crucial because the, the, you can charge so much money for the suites. Like you charge these corporations money and they buy them because it's a fucking write off. Mm. But what they do is they create this separation. Yes, yeah. the <laughs> 300 the floor section is, and then the high sections. And so there's less intimacy, you would say, than in the in these ones that were built before the idea of suites. Like it feels weirdly intimate for such a crazy room. Yeah, yeah. But well. Every time when we go into the room for the first time, it is jaw dropping for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, it, and also pulling up. Like I think in 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 your life or in career, you get so used to like what is the next thing we have to do. You know, you're like, what else can we, it's sometimes you don't even, you have to like remind yourself to like focus and enjoy the thing in front of you. Like it's something I like try to intentionally do. Like, I don't want to look back when my daughter's like 18 and you know, she's like, so what was it like when you were doing comedy all the time? And I, I don't want to be like, I don't know. I didn't really focus on it. I was focused on the next thing. And I, you know, I was worried about this thing and that thing. And how can we do this better? Like, so there's like a moment where it's, how do we be, intentional like lock the fuck in mm -hmm. <laughs> and seeing the venue from the outside was like yeah that was you know what's so crazy about that i don't know why crazy that was fun. yeah you know what's crazy, crazy about driving up difference like msg parked in the middle of a city tv garden it, all you can't yeah. see it mm. you're in la so there's it's, thousands yeah. of parking spots around so you just see one round building like and a that, fucking uh, coliseum you it own like four, you own like, several city blocks for that night yeah <laughs> and you pull in and then it's just did you feel the uh, forum club like we had the forum club before and after that's like showtime lakers i mean jack nicholson and yeah. the <laughs> magic getting aids yeah <laughs> stop <laughs> yeah is that what well, hiv yeah probably it's got not HIV. True, hiv he probably got hiv there or he gave it both probably. probably. Wow, in that very room. I thought yeah. I was gonna say champagne. What was, no. That's, well, the champagne no. led to the HIV. Problem. Yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's just like a magic. Did he freak off? Man. <laughs> that was the freak off before the freak yeah. off. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Anyway, yeah. so it was just so cool. Thank you everybody that came out. That was awesome. And uh, yeah, I'm just really grateful. It was, and I feel like we put on a put on a really good show. That is, that is always the the cool feeling to leave with. Yeah, you know where you feel like proud of the show that you mm -hmm. gave the people, and mm -hmm. I think that think we did top to bottom. I feel really good about the show. Like from when you walk in, you know that it has begun. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, and it's something we take really seriously in, in terms of like how do you scale a show like this for venues like that. It's yeah. not like we just walking out. We have one fucking light, and then there's a microphone, and then that's it. And I think a lot of times. Yeah, some people, they don't change their show to accommodate the viewing experience for the consumer mm. when they're now in an arena. And you can do it. It costs fucking a lot of money to do it, <laughs> which we will gladly spend because we're grateful people are showing up. But that's, I think, the difference. Because you can create that intimacy, and now you have uh, that... It's not the same as a club with 200 people, but you have intimacy, but now you're laughing with 13,000 people, and that feeling is different. Mm. Like, that is... Yeah. Yeah. Now, speaking on the intimacy of the show, so I went to the Drake concert over the weekend. I wanted to come out to uh, yours, but my little baby girl's still not vaccinated, so I can't fly with her yet. You know. <laughs> Your dog. No, no, my, my baby girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a father now, bro. Your dog. And I'm a father now. I love seeing Al become a dog guy. <laughs> this guy's crazy. Fucking. <laughs> anyway, go on. <laughs> Do you walk the dog? You don't even walk the dog, right? We can't yet. She's not. She actually not got her last vaccination today, so she what? can't. No, you can't. Oh, we got to talk about that too, but go on, go on. So yeah, went to the Drake concert and you've been to it. It's not that much different from the one he was doing with 21. He switched a few things like, but it is, it feels so intimate because he has, he's right in the center and then he lets the whole floor come to him. Yeah. And then throughout the show, he's like talking to people in this section and that section. Like yeah. he makes a giant arena venue look like, or feel like a yeah. small intimate show. Is he doing and, the thing where he wraps off beat still? No. <laughs> he not, stopped that. He stopped that. Good. So he stopped that. You could rap along with the show. It's a lot better now. Um, he does take a few shots at Kendrick here and there. Oh, really? Subliminals, of course. He never says his name. But I really feel like Kendrick wants him to shoot first because I've heard through a source that uh, Kendrick has two confirmed diss tracks, like, ready to go. Wow. Why don't he just drop them? That's what Drake did on Meek that was so brilliant is just run it up. That's a good point. If yeah. Kendrick drops... 
back to back, then back to back to back. Drake got it. I something. mean, but I think like we all know Drake is tested. And so if he drops first and then if Drake sees what he drops and then comes with something harder, then it's like uh, a harder battle for Kendrick. But I do think this is my suspicion, but uh, there's Dreamville this coming weekend. And I think Drake might have a surprise pop up and maybe that's when we get the diss track. Oh, wow. Oh, shit. That'd be like smart. He'll do a live? I, I think so. That's just a guess that I have. But, Whoa. Yeah. But he's not confirmed for Dreamville. So if I'm wrong, fuck you guys. But. Do you think <laughs> that they're in on this together? Which, who, Kendrick and Drake? Nah. Definitely not? Nah. This is like true competition. Like, everybody's been saying they're number one, number two. So it's like, he, they really want to just settle the score. Like, see. And they've been taking like low key shots at each other for a while. Right? Yeah, for real. And that's why I'm like. People, Kendrick and Cole apparently also have been taking shots at each other subliminally for a while. Yeah, but not as much as yeah. Kendrick and Drake. Like, of course, of course. They've been going at each other and like. People are saying this last track on Metro shit is like the first diss track, but it's not. He never said Drake's name. So it's like, when are you going to actually say his name? Because mm. that's when a diss track is a diss track. If yeah. you just keep, even though the subliminals are very direct. They're very clear. Know. They're not that sub. They're liminals. But yeah. still, <laughs> I mean, still, if it's a diss track, say the person's name. That's how I feel about it. But, and, but I guess what I'm, the reason why I asked, do you think they're in it? Because who benefits the most from this? It's them. The both of them, right? Yeah. And... Drake is in a position now where it's like there's nothing else that he can do, I feel, almost. Yeah. You've been on top of the game for over a decade. You've made all different types of music. You broke all different types of artists. Like, what else is there left? Like, no, nah, but it's way more upside for Kendrick. Oh, no, yeah, no, of, I, don't, I think Drake has a lot more to lose. Of yeah. course, of course, of course. But, like, there is there is upside for Kendrick, but also Kendrick is, is in such a different position in that, like, he's looked at as this like artsy rapper who only comes out every, you know, what is it, four years or whatever, he's dropping three. a project or three years he's dropping a project. Whereas Drake is looked at as probably the number one mainstream guy right now that's like curating culture. Drake is I've probably seen widely by people younger than us as the greatest ever. And maybe people our age, right. I don't know. Yeah, he's, but, like, sure. he's like the LeBron of but they both. But they both, in my opinion, it's like they both benefit from this because now... Drake doesn't need relevance, but now there's something to be interested in him outside of just another album. Mm. And he's dropping album, album, album. Music is great. We love it. His catalog is insane. We love it. But why are we into you now? Like, give us the thing. That's mm -hmm. true. Now we got a thing. Yeah. And then Kendrick is, I imagine, going to drop a new project soon, I assume. Never know with him. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. But I assume it's like, maybe let me start boiling things up. Let me get things going for when I drop. And now I'm going to drop while there's peak interest in me. Like, I'll drop in the middle of a beef. Here's oh, yeah. the one thing I would say for Drake. The longer he doesn't respond, I don't know, maybe people will forget at some point, but I was looking at comments on like an academics post or a Grand Wizard post or something. And a bunch of the comments were like, Drake, it's about, it's time to fucking respond. Like, let's go. I'm Yo, tired yeah. of defending but is that real or is that? But real people real real could real forget real. that. Or, you know, if he doesn't respond, I think Drake, if he responds, has more to lose than Kendrick because more people say Drake is the best ever than Kendrick is the best ever. I mean, ever. like, Drake, I, I think Drake is Teflon in that, like, he already lost the battle and he's better off. Like, he already got the worst scarlet letter you can be put on a rapper and he's still flawless. Like, like two is two though, and Push is not Kendrick in terms of the perception people have of them. Pusha T is not somebody that people think was ever competing with Drake. Yeah, but I think Pusha is a better battle rapper, if you will. Not not that he's a battler, but like than Kendrick. Like Kendrick, I see like more like artsy storytelling and great rhymes, but I don't see him as like a diss you, make you look crazy, dude. Whereas like. See, I don't think, we, I mean, it makes sense. I, I think I see what you're saying, but to be fair, we would have never thought Push Ahead would have a diss track that would go that crazy until, what was the story of Eddie Don, I yeah, think yeah, it was yeah. called? Yeah. No, no, 100%, 100%. Don't get it, 100%. I guess I wonder if he just feels like there's nothing that could happen to him. Yeah. I think, yeah, I think he feels like me responding, there's more to lose than gain. Drake. Oh, I don't think he's hesitating on, on like, I don't think he's scared to respond. I think he's calculated. I, I, I think he is. I, really? I, I don't want to say scared because, again, I, I am a Drake hater. I still don't think I give it up. But I'm not, so I don't want to say he's scared, but he's just looking at it logically and being like, why would I? Yeah. What upside is there for me to respond? Because he's looked at at the top of the game right now. If he lets 
two, three months go by, everybody forgets this. Nobody's talking about it. So he could just stay at his position. If Bro. he responds and then Kendrick's shit is better, now that confirms Kendrick is the top, is better than But him. if he goes crazy and his shit is better than Kendrick's, then it's like undisputed. Yeah. So No one can touch him. No one's going to fuck with him. The high risk, high reward. If I'm Drake, I'm so tight. Oh, yeah. He's like, off. I'm just like, yo. If I'm Drake, I'm like, I help everybody. I give everybody a feature. I support everybody. I put everybody on. I take so many chances on so many artists and really try to uplift them. Mm -hmm. And I got to deal with this motherfucker who barely comes out ever making a diss track about me so that he can be looked out as number one where I'm dropping an album every single fucking year. I'm still on top of the game. Like, yeah. I would be annoyed. I would look at it low key as clout chasing. Mm -hmm. I'd be like, bro, like, I. Literally, I'm just, I'm, 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 I'm Drake. I'm like, I'm a good guy. <laughs> I am helping people. Who is Kendrick putting on? That, that part is true. Who is? You can't say he's a good guy because he has been taking shots too. If he took no shots back, then that's fair. He could say. But who that. really started it? It's hard. But to Kendrick, it's, Kendrick has some shots too. Control. Been, Kendrick been started been it a decade, years. twelve years ago, or whatever yeah. the fuck, with right. Control. Okay. Yeah. But yeah. Kendrick I, started it. I also yeah. give that to I, Kendrick. Kendrick has always been. I never looked at it. Maybe now it's bad blood or whatever, but control we all just looked at like, oh, this guy wants it. Fire. Yeah. That verse when he said to everybody, "Let's go. This is rap. Oh, I'm taking shots oh, it's great at all for you us. guys." Don't get me wrong. Like the consumer, it's awesome oh, for yeah, the consumer it. wins. But I imagine if I'm Drake, it's like I am putting out so much goodwill in this brutally competitive, hateful genre of entertainment all of entertainment is fucking like hateful and competitive but this is brutally competitive in that like you can actually talk shit about yeah. one another actors can't do that mm -hmm. you know what i mean like if fucking brad pitt and george clooney have beef they don't act it out mm -hmm. like <laughs> in in rap you can actually do it and he's got so much goodwill for everything he's done right. and he's still getting people talking shit. And, i do and think though the other rappers choosing sides too which is even crazier <laughs> Mm. Like you see Ross turning on him, Future, Metro. You saw LeBron mouthing the Kendrick verse. Well, yeah, what do you moments. think about that? I think it's calculated. From I think LeBron? it's calculated. Yeah. What do you think? The I'm not trying to be dickhead. What like do you think calculation is? saying whose side I'm on without having to say whose side I'm on. See, I don't know. LeBron, LeBron always yes. positions himself as like just a rap connoisseur, fan of all rap. So I can maybe see him being like, this is me furthering that image. Look, I know the words of this song that came out two weeks. I'm in the culture still. Even though I'm 39, I'm still a hip-hop head. Mm. I could see that more than I'm choosing sides. Maybe. He didn't bring Kendrick on the shop. He brought Drake on the shop mm -hmm. and said something like, you never had to respond to push. I love you no matter what. I think you're great no yeah, matter Drake what. Drake has been to Bronny's games, I think, yeah. too. Like that, There's a lot of maybe, love there. Maybe there's something going on behind, behind the scenes where people have a reason to be upset at Drake. Because it's weird. Like Drake and Ross have been cool for their entire career. What did Ross say? I don't even know. Like he was just all, all he was driving in his car playing a Kendrick song and just like, I'm this telling is... you, it's, it's, no, 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 <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you guys are fucking murderers. You talk about murdering people, and then you're like, you know how I'm gonna show Drake? I'm gonna play the other guy's song in my car on Instagram stories. <laughs> what are we doing, bro? Say, talk your shit. How are we talking more shit than them? <laughs> Yo, you know what this shit is? It's fucking hate. I believe I, that. It's hate, it's hate and jealousy. I can believe that. Mm. I, I, from like, a guy who you, hates on Drake, I believe it. But, but. <laughs> <laughs> game but recognized like, game. But you like friends with the dude because it's good for business. Hmm. But the second somebody takes a shot that could end up being a headshot, you can't wait to support it. Because yeah. he's knocking down the person that you're competing with. Uh. So it's like, yeah, that, that shit is, that shit is corny, bro. Now, unless Drake is out there smashing all their girls or something like that, that we don't know about. Yeah. Mm. And if that's the case, then we got to look That's the rumor it. with him and Metro, I guess. Yeah. He smashed Metro's and girl. And Future's girl. Future. Yeah. Did he smash Future's girls? Yeah, yeah but Future that. got a bunch of women. And Drake does. Right. And they all do. Like, <laughs> no and way. they all share them. Like, they, that's the thing. that like, There's this idea that, there's this like idea out there that, they're, that like each little area has its own women. There's like 500 women everybody's fucking. <laughs> I genuinely believe this. Yeah, yeah, There's yeah. a pool of 500 whores <laughs> that are shared by yeah. athletes, rappers, it's rule. actors. Yeah, it's an 80-20 yeah. rule. It's not like it's not like there's 10,000 in LA, 10,000 in New York. 10, no, no. There's like 500 to 1,000 mm. that are getting fucked by everybody. <laughs> 
And sometimes girls creep into that thing. They're like, ooh, this is too much. And then they creep out. But it's really not that many. Yeah. I, I, it sounds crazy. I'm but Post Malone wrote a song about that, I'm pretty sure. What do you say? Like, the, there's the same girls everywhere I go. Or it's like the same chicks every every party I'm at or whatever. They're mm-hmm. all invited to the same parties. They're all invited. It, it is the same. They all know the same model wranglers. I look at dating apps and Bro. they'll show mutual friends, Dude. guys, girls on certain things. And I'm just like... Also, it's hmm. not just the rapper athlete scene, right? There's like the the jet setter scene, like yeah. these fancy events, like mm-hmm. the US Open and the Fashion Week. Fashion Week and the F1. There are girls that they're models, they are professional models, they make their money modeling, mm-hmm. but they also are there to get their holes filled by the men <laughs> that frequent these events. Honestly, that's, that's their, their way to do it. But that is flowing all over the world. Like that's the no, no. that's the horn to no, beat. No, 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 no. Don't you guys understand what the new game is? I mean, it's not even a new game, but basically, these girls that'll have brand partnerships will be sent clothes, bikinis, and all this shit, and they have to basically make their social media posts. But they're going on trips around the world with these guys that are flying them everywhere, and then on these trips, they're, they're doing like, their they're promoted. posting the content that they did. So oh, they're wow. making money. Make your money, Don't dog. Run. Make your money. I, hey, I'm all about I empowerment. Because you know you know he'd so be much. paying for these. You know <laughs> he'd be wrangling these no. motherfuckers. All I'm trying to say is, it's there's just a collection of the same. Like I've been at like some parties, right, mm. where they'll be friends of doves that will tell me that they've smashed girls that are there with other people. Because they're all going to the same parties mm-hmm. for the last fucking decade. Yeah. It's high school. Yeah. At the highest level of this shit, it's high school. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Look, we saw with uh, 50 and Diddy. 50's baby mom who was seen Wait. with Diddy. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I'm like, I think that's a power thing. I think that's Diddy trying to. Even so, still, yeah. it's like, how are you with two but that biggest was, moments? That's, I think, <laughs> like, what are your chances? Yeah, to roster's moment? there. But roster's then, there. if that's a power thing, couldn't you say Drake theoretically fucking X, Y? Like, I assume Metro didn't fuck this girl once. Totally. I hate that we're gossiping about that. Metro didn't <laughs> fuck this girl once. <laughs> And you oh, mean, do tell, do tell. Crazy fucking, king, yo. Yeah, Christ yeah, yeah, I'm over. I Thanks hate, king, I hate king, myself king. halfway through my these fucking these who cares, yeah, dude. Fire. But <laughs> fucking who cares? I'm going to play a sub- subliminal of some comic I hate in my car. But, but, <laughs> <laughs> fucking, <laughs> God. The funny thing is that we think, right, that like all these famous people, they're just fucking thousands and thousands of girls. They're not. No, they're they all fucking thousand of girls. Oh, okay, okay yeah, yeah. Yeah. Do, 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 so, yeah. like, you see what I'm saying? It's like they're not going out like like back in the day when we would go out and try to get pussy. Mm-hmm. That we had to earn it. Oh, yes. These there's a thousand vaginas mm-hmm. that are just there to get fucked by the famous people, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. and they're all <laughs> fucking it. It's bobbing for apples, right? And they just go boom. Okay, I'll take this Brazilian, and then they go back to their hotel. Yeah, 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 boom! I'll take this girl from Romania, and I go back here. That is the game. So it's not like oh, they're kicking all this game. Those girls are like, okay, well, if I fucked Future last week, and then I fucked uh, Penny Hardaway and fucked 20 years ago. Okay, who else am I fucking now? Damn, mm. you probably couldn't bob for apples for shit. So I'm mean, <laughs> like, you push it away every time you try to I, I almost drown. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, I would drown. I would almost drown <laughs> before I even got to the apple. Yeah, it was That's fucked up. It was really fucked up. That's fucking wild. mood. That was traumatic. <laughs> traumatic for you to even bring that up, Al. <laughs> fucking piece of shit. You ever heard Zach Fox? You ever heard of him? He's like, yeah, uh, yeah comedian. Funny. He's like, Hilarious. The comedian rapper. Yeah. I think he's a satirical rapper, yeah, but he yeah, was yeah. a stand-up. Com- he was a stand-up oh, really? comic. Yeah, yeah, that's how I know him. Oh, yeah. I didn't know that. T- type of person. No, no, no. Zach Fox is no, his name. Black black. I don't know, like like that. No, not at no, all. He had like bits. No, yeah. he oh. was just he was like I knew him from his songs. Like he he did a song with Kenny Beats and went crazy, but he did an interview. Oh, with, with, he blew up Blueface. Did y'all know that? Really? He oh, posted. The, I'm almost positive. He posted the Blueface song where he's rapping off beat, the first one that uh, oh, really? that made Blueface go crazy. Mm-hmm. And I think he ironically posted it. Oh, hilarious. And then it just went crazy. I be- Maybe we should Google that just to check. That's Miles, wild. can you do Ox? something besides okay. drooling all over your fucking head? <laughs> 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 fucking retard. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I can't look. I need to read that. <laughs> Tuesday. <laughs> Tuesday. Thank you, brother. Thank you, brother. Please, please, Miles. Please, please. Stop. Tuesday, Tuesday, Miles, Tuesday. Like Miles <laughs> stop doing our sweater. Thank you, brother. <laughs> Thank you, brother. Thank you, brother. <laughs> Thank you, Miles. <laughs> so good, Miles. Oh. Thank you so much, Miles. God damn it, he wasn't yeah, listening at all. What's that show um, in Philadelphia school? Quint. Oh, Quintana Brunson. Yeah, I think he's in that. 
Ah, uh, Quinta, okay. Quinta Brunson, yeah, yeah. right? Qu- Quinceanera Brunson? La, la, la Quinta. Sorry. La Quinta Brunson. Sorry, guys. <laughs> yeah, but. No, he, nah, uh, nah, he's really funny. He did, a, he did a genius interview and they were like, asking him about like hooking up with girls or whatever. And he was just like, yeah, man, you can't hook up with these girls in LA. You go down on a girl, fucking taste Tiger's dick in your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, whoa, that's crazy. But it is true. They just become part, part of the scene yeah. and they're livestock and they just move from one. Uh, table to the next table on Tuesday they're at this table and Wednesday they're at that table different time and different people Mm -hmm. they're the foster horse you gotta sponsor one or something I think that could be a good way to like uh, give a charitable I cannot enable this anymore Dick. No, you use it as spies. You're able to get information. Oh, that's Bro. true. Actually, <laughs> sounds, <laughs> sounds like... I've been reading 48 Laws of Power, so once I finish that book, you guys are fucked. <laughs> <laughs> once I finish that whole thing, you guys are going to be Dude, powerful. You came I, off the plane then. Yeah, I floating. cannot wait for this. He was floating Ready until uh, breakfast at the Mark hotel. I'm on, is I'm already on in his head, but if you think he's already in his head... Now he's looking at everything through the 48 laws of power. Mm-hmm. So every social interaction, he's like, wait a minute, is this guy trying to... <laughs> the third law of power? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He's what is he to, trying to do to manipulate to me? He can destroy me? Yes. Oh, shit. Got him. Yeah, no, I've been on my 48 laws of power lately, dude. <laughs> yeah, shout out to Robert Green. I'm bro. halfway through. I'm halfway through being the most powerful man ever. Should we get Green on the pot? <sighs> he sure. sent us a book. He did. Mm. But that seems like a ploy. The fourth law of power. <laughs> Send gifts so that people don't see what you're doing. <laughs> Is that? Yeah, a, I made that one, but I feel like that's part <laughs> yeah, of it. Forty nine. That's forty nine. Like, oh, I feel like that, that is, was good. That's kind of part yeah. of it, right? Dude, that is the book. You just kind of like say some shit, <laughs> and people are like, "Wait a second, I need to write this. I'm gonna write like twelve more laws. I think that would be fun. I gotta figure them out though." Okay, so Crisis King. Mm-hmm. What were you about to say? Someone was about to bring something up, or we were gonna figure out Zach Fox's connection to Blueface's song. I'm googling the hell out of it. I can't find anything. That's okay. In the meantime, SBF so got locked you just up. Made that up. Basically. I might have made that yeah. up. <laughs> That's fine though. You can't even find it on Google. Then uh, damn. Yeah. I'm also okay. bad at this. I'm not good at this. We so. met a witch. Mark. Oh yeah. Oh, LA yeah. is too much. That hotel was too much. Yeah, you're bad. right. It is the hotel. That shit was horny. Bro. Damn, it was wild. There was a girl with gigantic fake tits, three dogs in a stroller, and a Mexican dude. She laid the Mexican at the restaurant with us for breakfast. I'm having a breakfast burrito. Mark's having a something hash. There's a hash, yeah. And uh, we're sitting down there Corby. sipping coffee. A uh, Mexican guy lies down on the bench. The uh, lady takes off her necklace and starts waving her necklace over the guy's head and chest and like speaking riddles and stuff. That to was him. just Spanish, but yeah, yeah. yeah. Was it Spanish? Yeah, 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 okay, it was Spanish. <laughs> but it was a white bitch. I didn't think she spoke Spanish at all. But she was. And now keep in mind, Mark believes in demons. Yep. He is. He is a very uh, gullible guy. Spiritual. We say spiritual. Oh, spiritual. Yeah, is that yeah, the word? Yeah, yeah, spiritual. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. He's a very yeah. spiritual yeah. guy. So Mark is not like Ben Shapiro supporter. Yeah, this guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's not even looking over. He's not even looking over his shoulder. I'm surprised he stayed. Oh, I was freaked out. But he I was, was clocking her in the mirror, though. There Yo, was a mirror on the side. I I'm couldn't even lie. see her in the mirror. But I, was, was, I was afraid. <laughs> it was wild. It was a copper energy Dude, fucking I had, amulet. I had, She's Dove dangling. kept going, hey, look, like this. I didn't know he she was He was trying throwing. to get the gold out of that amulet. <laughs> 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 so he goes, he goes, he goes, I'm I'm looking at Instagram because Instagram is serving up like amazing foot content. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, it was oh. going crazy. So, so uh, I'm looking at my phone and Dove's like, hey, hey, going like this. I notice there's a mirror behind me. I look at the girl. I think, because she's looking at my direction, I think she's catching Casting. my foot oh, okay. mm. Instagram content <laughs> through the mirror. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, is Dub telling me to like, get the foot stuff out, whatever like that? I'm like, oh, I'm so embarrassed that like I, I'm looking at foot stuff. Oh, my God. Well, it's so embarrassing. And then I noticed that this bitch is doing spells <laughs> 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 with no embarrassment at all. Oh was my she god! Hired from the hotel? No, nah, I think they were on. They were having a regular breakfast. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the fuck? Stop breakfast. Yeah. Spells. <laughs> also, what he's, he's been three in three York. He's in a baby stroller, and the guy <laughs> was normal. This like is a LA. Normal, like no, LA. He was a black dodger dude. wearing. Until hat. he started doing the spells, and Schultz was like, "Nah, he's Mexican. Nah, he's a Mexican. <laughs> <laughs> had to be Mexican. Yeah. Had to be." Could be Haitian. Say again. Hey, well, actually, Ooh. we thought potentially. Might have been food. Yeah, shout out barbecue. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, shout out barbecue, nope. bro. Has he responded to your DMs, by the way? No. Nah. He hasn't. We gotta go visit him, I think. Yeah, I think I think we'll take a nice little trip down there to Cannibal Ruler of Haiti. <laughs> barbecue. <laughs> yeah. You know, a lot of people have died, Akash. It's pretty insensitive. Yeah, you suggest a trip is. right now, you fucking cunt. <laughs> well, I saw an interview with the guy. I think that would go well for us. <laughs> what do you think would happen? Yeah, we would have a nice conversation, put out some great YouTube content. I can't, don't yeah, see any reason. Do some here. clips asking about Andrew Tate. <laughs> 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 go viral. I don't know, dude. 
barbecue <laughs> reacts to Andy. What's up, guys? I'm here at the barbecue. <laughs> Listen, for every head that makes it out of this room, we're maybe going to get $10,000. <laughs> we have to do a Mr. Beast YouTube video yeah, with that's barbecue. Fire. That's fire, dude. Oh, my God. <laughs> some travel vlogger get kidnapped? Yeah, that's what yeah. I was referencing. Uh, yeah, some kid went to go interview him, and they just kidnapped the motherfucker for two weeks. That was fire. Yeah. How he thought this is going to go well, I don't understand. He does that. He, like, goes and, like, interviews games. Yeah, like, I know, but that's crazy. You knew at some point this was going to backfire, right? Yeah. He but, dude, he got, up, he got back. Oh, he got back? Yeah, 16 days, I think he was held. So that worked. He yeah. paid some ransom, right? We don't know if he paid a ransom. How much ransom? If he ain't paid no ransom, then it's cat. Ribs? It might be cat. It might <laughs> yeah. be cat. How is it two baby back ribs? Is it two full racks? <laughs> Yo, you guys are being really insensitive. Like, How is that insensitive? He paid 50K, apparently. 50K to that's become the most toxic. But they, uh, they wanted yeah. like 600 or something. Bro, I mean, that's That's light work. That's worth it. <laughs> yeah. Guy came up. Yeah. Yeah. The they organic work. reach, dude. They wanted 400K. Yeah. That's a deal. So hell Wait, 50K that. from 400K? Well, this guy should not be in charge of the agent. economy. Who's his agent? The negotiation yeah. on that is fucking unbelievable. Yeah, He's no. working out deals like Trump. Baby boys and girls, you see the blue light. You know what that means. It's time for the blue chew. It's time to tell you about the first and most loyal sponsor that Flagrant has ever had. And we are loyal to them. You know why? Because we could all use a little bit of dick enhancement. Ladies, if you're with a man who's got a subpar dick, but he's a great guy, like some people I know, give them some blue chew. Blue chew can help things. Let him chew it out for you. Fellas, if you got a girl that's special and you're a little nervous, a little self-conscious about your dick game, or if you are lying to yourself and pretending it's fantastic, but deep down you know it's not that great, you know what you need. You need that blue chew. And Flagrant has always given you this phenomenal offer to try it. It will give you your first shipment of blue chew for free. All you have to do is pay $5 for shipping. That's it. So, blue chew. Gonna help you have better sex. Just uh, take a little look-see. Bluechew.com. Chew it and do it, baby. And like I said, because we're flagrant, we always have this special deal. Blue Chew is free if you want to try it. Just use our promo code flagrant at checkout. Just use our code flagrant at checkout. You get $5 shipping. Again, that is bluechew.com, promo code flagrant. To get your first month for free, just pay $5 for shipping. Visit bluechew.com for more details and important safety information. And obviously, shouts to Blue Chew for always being loyal to us, asshole army. Let's get back to the show. All right, guys, we're going to take a break real quick because some of you have been wrongfully injured by someone else's negligence. Maybe malpractice, I don't know. But you have been wrongfully injured, and that sucks. It's hard to go through all of that. You got to deal with the doctor's appointments. You got to deal with the insurance company. You got to deal with all kinds of shit. But did you know that if you are injured from someone else's negligence, you could be entitled to money and you could be missing out. And as hard as all of this is to go through, what's easy is submitting a claim on Morgan & Morgan. You know about Morgan & Morgan, America's largest injury law firm. They have recovered over 20 20 billion dollars for over 500,000 clients. That means they have helped 500,000 families and they have gotten them considerable amounts of money. Morgan & Morgan, proven track record to get you full, fair compensation. Again, getting injured because of someone else's negligence is hard to go through, but luckily submitting a claim with Morgan & Morgan is easy. So if you're ever injured, you can check out Morgan & Morgan. And this is important, their fee is free unless you win. So for more information, go to forthepeople.com slash flagrant or dial pound law, that's pound 529 from your cell phone. Again, that is F-O-R-T-H-E-P-E-O-P-L-E.com slash flagrant or pound law, pound 529 again from your cell phone. And uh, just to be clear, this is a paid advertisement. Let's get back to the show. Oh, Yo, yeah. shout out oh. Trump, oh, bro. Yeah. What did he do? Well, he's indicted. Or what, he owes, what, $175 million in like 10 days? Yeah, he posted it. He posted? Yeah. Guy got the money. But they were coming at our boy John Stewart and I didn't like it. I looked into well, this. Well, wow, what happened? What did so John So John Stewart did a whole Daily Show piece about what Trump did, which is basically like he would massively lie about the... Like the size of a home he had, it would be ten thousand square feet, and it's say thirty. It's thirty thousand square would feet. Inflate the value of his. Property. So that would inflate the value of his property, and then he would go to the bank and be like, "Hey, let me get this massive loan at a lower interest rate because I'm worth so much money. Look how much I have in holdings. There's no risk. No risk. You guys can just have that if I default on it. So he yeah. would get a lower interest rate. He got found guilty of that, and the judge ordered them him to pay four hundred fifty million dollars, which is what the judge said those loans with interest would have cost you or what that's how much you made on it and then he pays that to whom he pays that to the city of new york and what do they do with it give it back to the people through whatever the, the taxes give it to the migrants whatever. give it to the migrants, the migrants. exactly yeah. that's give what we court. do yeah <laughs> but the pro I, so that <laughs> the bigger issue is stewart does this piece and i think the point of stewart's thing was like he kind of goes at kevin o'leary from shark tank yes pretty hard because kevin o'leary's like dude we all do this this is we're all all my friends are scared like what's going to happen to us and he's like 
rich people are so used to breaking the law that they're like, we broke the law and we got punished. What the fuck? Mm. This is, and his point is, I think more so, what you guys don't understand is if poor people do this, they get thrown in jail. If you lie about your net worth to get a car loan and they find out, you get punished. That's it's not, not something you just get away with. That's not true. But. Whether or not that's it, New York Post does an article like John Stewart does the exact same thing. He sold a house in Tribeca for $17 million. Its assessed value is 1.4 million. 1.84, yeah. These are, I looked into it as completely different things. I talked to a realtor friend yeah. of mine, you might know from Miami, but he uh, basically said this assessed value is just the city sends out officials and they have their own metrics and they say, this is how much we think the property is worth. You get taxed a percentage of that net worth, 1.8 million. The free market decides what the apartment exactly, sells yeah. for. Somebody really wants to buy John Stewart's house, then they can and pay whatever he wants. He didn't lie about the square footage. It's a 6,000 square foot Tribeca duplex yeah. with a 1,200 square foot private roof, an 800 square foot terrace. 17 million is not that crazy for this property. You might have overpaid because it's John Stewart's, but like I looked up pictures. I saw. I sent it to Miles. No, no, he, overpaid, like a, he overpaid significantly. But but he sells it down the road for 13 million. So it's not like it's a one million dollar house that he sold for 17 million. 25 percent loss on a piece of real estate, which is in Manhattan. It's, it's very hard to do. But that doesn't mean that that John has done something illegal. But let's not undermine what's happening. Also, here. the yeah. guy could have sold because he needs money. Sometimes a guy goes broke. A lot of these really expensive properties, you'll see marked down more than you would a yeah. $100,000 house because it's just, there's more room and the guy needs the money now or whatever. Sure. We don't know what those circumstances are, but we know John Stewart just sold a house. But you're allowed to sell anything. your house for whatever price People, that you yeah. want. Yeah. So he did nothing wrong and actually sent the my friend, our friend, the article and he was like, oh, this is a complete hit piece. Yeah. Now he did say what's happening to Trump. He do, he was like, every real estate person does this. That's that. The thing isn't whether or not it's wrong. The thing is people have this Trump derangement syndrome where anything that he does, they will grab onto and be like, what an absolute animal to do something like this when they don't realize that not only is John taking the position of protecting the banks, like his position is, but the bank could have got hurt. Yeah. You know that bank? Well, John that says kicks I don't give poor people out of their home. John says <laughs> I don't give a fuck about the bank. He says No, I know he yeah. doesn't, but the only person that can get hurt in this situation. I understand in the piece he was like, well, those loans could have went out to some uh, which other I people, don't necessarily agree which with. they couldn't have. Yeah, I, there's yeah. never the bank never goes, "Oh, we're out of money." Yeah. The, the whole idea of fractional reserve banking is there's always more money. Yeah. yeah. So the, it, an entire housing collapse was built on this idea. Of yeah. There's always loans. more money, and they will give you. They can't wait to give you money if you meet the stipulation. So yeah. I don't think that that was fair. I don't think it's a fair hit piece on John. It's at all. Piece, but it's also a hit piece on Trump. He's not doing anything that any other developer in New York doesn't do, and it's up to the banks to vet these things. The yeah. banks just go, oh, I guess we believed it. Yeah, that's like, on the banks. Now, I was thinking maybe they're coming after him, mainly because he's Trump. Secondarily, I was wondering if the banks feel embarrassed. Like, dude, we got got so fucking hard. But they didn't get got. They got paid back. Everybody made money. There's, It's a victimless crime. That's what Kevin O'Leary is basically saying. Like, if somebody lost money, okay, clip them. But the developer that he was working with was like, yo, we made money. The banks got their money back. Everybody made money. So, so yeah, I don't, why I, is he paying $450 million to the city or to the state? If there's a victim who lost $450 million, pay him that and so, like, how dare yeah. you? But if nobody lost money, he beat the system and that's kind of what happens. Mm, Did some people think they were going to make system, more money? You're lying. Say again? Did some people think they were going to make more money? I, have to, I, I, don't, I would have to look in that. I think he made more money because of it, but I think the bank made back the interest that they want. That's what they're looking forward to. Uh, it's still a version of fraud. Like if you're lying on this document to get a loan and you're lying about how much you're worth, it's still... I would look at it like... Like you're still committing a crime. Maybe I, the severity of the crime is not that crazy, but it's still a crime. My feeling is like you can't commit the fraud if they don't verify it. Like, do we really think that the bank isn't verifying this shit? Like, I can't fathom the bank. Like, you bought a house. The the amount of bullshit that you got to go through to buy a house, the amount of legal, bull, the bureaucracy, the amount of checks and credit and everything that you have to buy a piece of property. I cannot fathom when it comes to hundreds of millions of dollars of property, they're just going to be like, how much did Trump say it was worth? Ah, all right, I believe him. The banks know the developers are scumbags. They know, they are acutely aware of how scummy they are, and they're literally looking for margin anywhere they can get it. So they develop systems to protect against them. For whatever reason, they let that shit go. I'm just saying, like, this isn't, there are plenty of things you can be critical of Trump about. Yeah. 
this isn't the what is it uh, the, the the hill to die on or whatever the cross to could the, it be Christ, <clears throat> Christ King? Uh, um, could it be what you often say to like you talk about the, I think you had a drug dealer on Brilliant Idiots and he was like man I got cr- seven years for a crime I didn't commit yeah and you were like did you do other crimes that you could have gotten hundred percent could it be the same thing with Trump uh, yeah one hundred percent but get him on those like and get him on the ones where they're victims like that those to me like I always joke around about like him not paying the the um, the contractors and how he's my hero because. The contracts yeah. are taking forever to like do any fucking renovation. I want to do. I keep spending more money. I joke about it, but if there are of those contractors, those families that the whole business went under because they couldn't afford to pay their bills, and like those people really hurt. That's to me a more compelling story. If you're trying to assassinate this man's character, yeah. to me that's more interesting than oh, Bank of America didn't count the square footage, and then he able was able to get a loan that he paid back, and everybody made money on. Yeah, I, I honestly don't, I don't know. I don't think he should be prosecuted, but I'm playing devil's advocate. Again, to your point, this is the thing they can get him on. So he got away with these other things that we can't get him on. We can get him on this. So We're you're saying this is this. the, uh, didn't pay his taxes shit for, uh, El- yeah. Yeah, for Capone. Yeah, Capone. He made enough enemies and now they're going to get him on whatever they can. And so are you mad that he got, not mad, but do you feel that it's the hit piece uh, by John or the fact that he was even prosecuted is what's unfair? Oh, I don't think, I don't care about the John thing. Like, I do whatever you want. I think it's, I, my, my feeling is prosecuting him for this is only going to embolden his base and for, and rightfully so. Like, if I'm a big Trump guy and I see this guy who's like under attack. That's my And fear. then you see this thing happening. And if you have any idea of like how real estate in this city or any city works, you're like, this is what they all kind of fucking do. Like, we're really just targeting this guy. Now it justifies that, yeah, they are targeting your guy. Now you're going to lean in 10 times more. But do you think, like, say, whoever discovered that he was doing this or like, eh, let's just let him do it. Because we don't want to make his base, but like they should, I feel like they should still bring the charges against them. I think if you prosecuted more other rich people, it might be a and thing. But here's the thing: maybe that starts. Maybe that like, does. Because you guys say it like, "Oh, everybody's doing this," and I, I wasn't aware that everybody's doing this. I wasn't aware. I, I, I think that the value I think that is John's point: is like earnings. And rich people just low. tend to get away with financial let me, crime. Let me, let me, let me put. Well, people with finances are the only ones that can get away with financial crime. It's not like. Well, a, it's, it's, you could lie to qualify for food stamps. I think was a, an example of John. And they do up. that all the time. Poor people do that all the time. And I think like, people get upset about it. Yeah, but they're not going to jail. They're not forced to pay back the food stamps. Like, how many of our friends like claim someone else's kid? Like that was the big thing growing up. Like if your friends had a kid, you claimed them as a dependent. Think, like, well, yeah, I think they that, stopped doing that because you, the IRS started cracking down on it. Right. So now you can't do. You, they closed that loophole up. Are yeah, you, you can't get Are away you with certain that. of that? Or? Well, yeah, you don't hear that joke nearly as yeah. much anymore. I'm fairly certain. I'm 99% certain. Tax people have told me, yeah, the IRS is cracking down on this dependent shit. You're not just getting around. You're not getting away with that anymore. Got it, got it, got it. Which, I, again, I think, and I'm, I'm not even necessarily saying I love John. I don't agree with everything he says. I don't really agree with this piece, but, but I think that's his point, but, which but, I can understand. Yeah, yeah, but this is not something the IRS needs to crack down on. There's already a rule in place that it's not allowed. Yeah. Right. Right. So the the rules are there. Mm-hmm. It's how it's prosecuted. Mm-hmm. If the rule gets removed that you can't claim dependence, that is something entirely different. It's up to in this circumstance, I believe the banks to make sure that whoever they're loaning money to is capable of paying it back. It is in their best interest to do it. If I'm the bank and I find out that this person defrauded us, I'm firing every single person in the division. Like we, got, I'm basically going. We got lucky that he ended up paying it back, but I can't trust y'all to run this fucking Absolutely. business. Like now, to me, that is how you punish this. It, now, yeah, yeah fair. But, but is there? Say everybody does it. Let me give you an look. example. Let me is give there, you. Sorry, is there not a rule in place that says you can't lie about these things to get a loan? And I would assume that's a rule in place that. Sure, there's 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 definitely a rule where it's like be honest about your things, but I also think that those things are checked. Example: of This, you look at an apartment in New York City. A lot of people don't know this, but if you were in like a walk up in New York City, the stairwell can be considered part of your square footage for your floor. So you might have 800 square feet in your apartment and then a 200 square foot stairwell. You list that as a thousand square feet. Now, you don't really have a thousand square feet. You have 800 square feet, right? Mm. So the price of your apartment is based on a square footage. Is it 2,000 a foot? Is it 4,000 a foot? But is it 2,000 a foot based on a thousand? 
or 800. Now, it is legal to include the square footage. Should it be? Is that something that they should change? Because you're really talking about a dwelling. That's a shared stairwell. Mm -hmm. That's not your actual space. There are so many little fucking little angles and shit that you can push pull within real estate. I'm not saying that this is the exact same thing, but here's an example of how the average everyday person, you, 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 me, would list our apartment. Yeah, but I, I can see that because if you get around the system legally, then good, take advantage of everything you can get out of the system. But if you're doing it illegally, ten thousand to thirty thousand playing field for everybody. Here's something illegal. Really here's something illegal that every single right now you go onto any website in New York City. My apartment right now is the apartment that I live in with my wife and our baby nurse is listed as a three-bedroom apartment. It is a one-bedroom apartment that has a dining alcove and then a, a mezzanine, it's called. Hmm. It is legally a one-bedroom apartment. In order to be a bedroom in New York City, you need a window. And a closet. And a, I guess, yeah, that's right, in a closet. <laughs> they illegally list it as a three-bedroom apartment they illegally use that, I'm sure, to inflate the value of their building. Mm -hmm. They illegally obtain loans based on three-bedroom listings because you charge four more. So they are illegally doing this. Nothing's happening. They're not being sued. The developer is not suing them. They're not having to pay the city. Like, this is... You go on any real estate website right now. Yours, when you bought yours, they probably said... One, or not bought yours, when you rented yours, they're probably like one bedroom or mm -hmm. something like that. It's fake one bedroom. Fake? Yeah. Right? But so this is like the smallest version of it. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying is like, they're all doing it and we will do it when we have the opportunity to. Yeah. When you sell your place, mm -hmm. you're going to go every square inch of everything. Yeah. I'm just saying, what I'm saying is it's just not the hill to die on with Trump. Like go after him for the things that are legit but don't go after him for the things that he does that everybody in his field fucking does. Yeah. Because it's just going to look like what it actually is, which is a fucking I, hit piece. I, again, I agree. Wow. It's I, it's just, they're yeah. just trying to get but, Trump because they don't like him. I think I said at the top. That's the main thing. Also, 10,000 square feet to 30,000 square feet is a huge lie. And I think this is the thing they can get him on. The, it's hard to get him on some of these other things, probably. Yeah, Otherwise, I they, I think, would have gotten them because they don't like them. They want them out of here. Yeah. But this is the thing they can get. I don't even think they get him on this. I don't think they do either. And I do think it only serves to embolden his fan base. Yeah, but right like, now, this is the thing they can get. But, and and what I, when I say they, I just want to be very uh, careful here. I don't even know if it's a organized hit. I think it could also be people trying to make their career off of oh. Trump. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So it's not as nefarious as like seven people at the DNC saying, hey, you go get him, you go get him, you go no, get Hillary him. Hillary Clinton's the actual attorney <laughs> that's suing him, dude. But it's also party politics as well. But no, there's definitely party yeah. politics, but it's also, there's a DA who's like, oh, I'm going to make my career off yeah. taking down Trump. It is, so what I'm saying is you don't even care, like not even you, but like, mm. The person that's doing it doesn't even care about the people, the good people of mm. New York or the banks or whatever. They care about forward progress in their mm. career Don't and they're that. using this person yeah. to do it. When they go private, they can be like, yo, I'm the one guy that got money from Trump. Yeah. So mm. it's everybody is faking it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which is the game. That's Don't the get game. me wrong. <laughs> You're saying 100%. So like, but when, I don't want when, to call out one part of the game when everybody's playing the game. So, so it's the same thing, I guess, with like trans visibility day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which is like, <laughs> and we were having this conversation before where it's like, you get to a certain point where you're like, if everything's fake, why is nobody acknowledging this? And how do we trust any piece of information? Like trans visibility day, Biden declares it. You knew when you printed it. Yeah. That he didn't declare fucking Easter Sunday trans visibility day. This was a clerical, not, I won't even call it clerical. This was a timing thing. Mm. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Like, it's honestly Catholics flipping the fucking day every year <laughs> when you think about it, right? Yeah. So, and the same thing with this. And it's just like, when everything is just bullshit, do you just play the game as well? knowing that you're a liar? Or do you call out the truth 
Like, yeah, what do you what do you do in that situation? I, I feel like the making fun of how absurd it is that everybody's just going along with a lie. John Stewart is the position, but John knows. John knows better. He knows better. I feel for everyone who like calls it how he sees it. I think he's the closest to being authentic. No, I think, I, I think John kidding. is authentic. Yeah, John yeah, is yeah. purely authentic. What I'm saying is he also knows that this thing on Trump is bullshit. And the only reason he's doing it is because Trump is running for president. He could have done this 20 times over with every developer in New York City. He didn't. Mm -hmm. He's doing it because it is an example of why this person that maybe he believes is unfit to be president shouldn't be. Hmm. That That's what I'm saying. And, and also he's running for public he's office running, and he should be scrutinized yeah, yeah. just like anybody else says, a hundred percent. And John's show is to talk about politics, what? so he's not going to just pick on any other developer. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. I'm not critical of the choice. I am critical of the choice about this specific thing when maybe there are other things that he could focus on. Mm. Mm. We spent so long on this fucking <laughs> this topic. Was it interesting? I, don't I, think so. yeah. I have no clue what's real. I have no clue what's fake. You I know what's no real clue. though? Crisis King. King. Crisis King. Crisis Thank King. you. Every time we say that, yeah, Miles is going to insert a picture of you at the anointing stone, oh, touching fly. the stone. Hell yeah, dude. You haven't been there? I, I didn't write them all down, so don't hold me to that standard. I've been there, right? Or have I? I don't even know. Is that the wall? I'll do it now. <laughs> you haven't nah. been to the anointing stone, bro? He hasn't been to Israel. Wait, really? I'm in Israel. I'm going to go. It's not even on. When this whole little uh, kerfuffle settles down. Yeah, when they wow. get over themselves. <laughs> kerfuffle, that's what you... Wait, Wait you nice went to, to the go. wall, but you didn't go to... You must have gone to the Church of the Holy Sepulcher. Nah. But Brother. you went to the Jew wall? My son, I had to get my pick off, bro. <laughs> <There's> <laughs> Why wouldn't you get your pick off at the anointing stone? Man. That's where Jesus was wrapped up. Yeah, hey, I didn't have enough time. And it's also, on the way to the wall. You didn't go to the tomb where Jesus rose to heaven? I went to the place where he nah. went to heaven What from? do you mean enough, enough time? The whole shit's like a block, right? Nah, go, it's, you, it's, a, it's a whole No, but you walk wall. from your car past this small church that has the Sepulcher Church to the Jew Wall. Well, maybe As I, a Jew, I'm offended. My tour guy, he wasn't. <laughs> he didn't bring me there. <laughs> Yo, we should go do a Hajj. We should go to Mecca during Ramadan, dude. I have a friend that's there right now, and he was telling me the whole shit was like, you got to like camp out and you get your whole thing, and then you take spend the day doing the 500 and you go around it. If you go, I hope you get fucking kidnapped. Like Why that would I get kidnapped? Yeah, yeah, so no. There's one place he's not going to get kidnapped. Yeah. Why would I get kidnapped? Yeah. It's so annoying. Why? Why is it annoying? Going to do Hajj. Like but you know you can't do the Hajj. Well, if I convert? Oh, you have to be a revert. Oh, really? Isn't that what it's called? Because everyone was Muslim exactly. at one point. Exactly. Oh, that's fire. Oh, that's, oh, that's, that's kind of smart. Oh, that's Isn't it branding. called a, a revert? Can, can somebody look that up? Were they I'm all, pretty sure. Were that. they all Muslim? Meaning like, <laughs> <laughs> we're all Muslim in God's eyes. Oh, that's fire. Oh, okay. oh that's good branding. Oh, that is great branding. That's, that's I, I've never fire. heard no, that. No, no, it's great. That's fine. Uh, can someone look that up? I want to make sure I'm not You know what you don't need to look up? It's a trend is starting We don't need to do that. We don't need to look up the facts, but we can remind you that you were all Jews before. Stop the count. Just want to. No, we weren't all Jews before because you guys wouldn't let us in, you selfish fucking greedy piece of shit. You're the only only ones, yeah. <laughs> right? Well, you could have been all Jews. Stick you could around. have solved this whole fucking Israel-Palestine thing if you just let them dreidel up, but you didn't. <laughs> Is that the answer? The that fact all we that do? they got Christians and Muslims in there. Yeah, dude. I what, think you guys got to bring some people in, yeah. dude. Open it, oh. Open it up. Open it up. Open it up, Jews. <laughs> Open it up. You got the toughest bounces, bro. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> like, even if, what's the rule? Even if your dad's Jew, you're not a Jew? Yep. That's oh, crazy, crazy, bro. That's crazy. half. And I'm ready to marry an anti-Semitic girl. As long as she's Jewish. What else? I don't care. After she marries you, she will be. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of Jews, dude, SBF is a real one. Yo, what do you do? Keep him. He didn't snitch. Wait a oh. minute. Tell me. What Bro. does that mean? Who do you have to snitch on? I know. He's everyone else went top down. Top. Everyone else went down. What does that mean, everyone else? Went everyone down? else that's in the organization that was like a part of uh, FTX or Alameda. Yeah. All of them cooperated. They all turned over, like, one state's evidence, like, gave over text messages, gave over everything. Yeah. Yes, they should. There was, well, they all were getting rich off it. Everyone was doing dirty shit. Oh, so wait, he's the only one that... Yeah. Well, yeah, he doesn't have an opportunity to snitch on everybody because he's, he's the head. The he was up, snitched right? on. But there's got to be a way, right? No. No. There's nothing you can he's say. The he's the top. He's Al Capone. Bro. He's the godfather. They, they could go and get someone. He could get someone else. Who's he going to get? Tom Brady? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. There's Larry, nobody Larry else David. to get. Could get Larry David? There's nobody else to get. <laughs> yeah. No, SBF, he, the, he's he's going. Well, Free him. Yeah, free SBF, Loki. Free SBF. Some people were saying that his parents were in on it too, which is hilarious. Of course they're in on it. Have you looked into this? 
They're both Stanford law professors. You just shook your head no. <laughs> <laughs> you, do, you do believe it. I do believe it. Crisis I do king, believe dude. It. Crisis, Crisis believe king. It. Not I believe. a single Christian crypto fraud person. Mm. That's, that's probably not true, but I'm, I'm with it. No, Look it fashion. up. Look it up. <laughs> I mean, There's not a single Christian crypto fraud person. <laughs> it's true. What Look it up. Google. The Winklevi. Yeah. Look up the Winklevi. Or Hindu. Or Hindu. I don't know about y'all. No, we're good. Denver, I don't know about y'all. A Denver pastor was charged. Uh, nah, 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 nah. Pastor. Keep going. Charged Keep with going. cryptocurrency fraud, and he said God told me to do yep. it. Yep. No, Saw that one. Saw that one. God that's, damn, That's dude. a crypto that's coins. Rough. That don't count. Nah, nah, nah. God. Let no. me As understand it. Crypto what? what? what no, we, but when, when you come up with the fake coins, oh, like crypto just, Sorry. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yo, what happened to crypto zoo? <laughs> that's what we did. No, that's what we did. Fuck. No. What happened that's to crypto zoo? No. That's you. That's you. That's you. No, no, fuck it. I, you get a subpoena later you on. Bro. No. Get you if, S, if SBF is getting twenty five years, how long is Logan getting <laughs> for crypto zoo? Bro. He shouldn't get the same amount, but he should go to jail for a little. He bit. needs to get at least five years for that fried chicken shit. Yo. Five years for the prime fried chicken, yeah. which is so racist to send that to fucking blacks. Bruh. You got literally two Alex. We got. Can you show me the thing? Tell me that it's on the ground. Oh, there it is. There it is. I don't even want to see it. This got sent to Alex Media at Flagrant Studios. <laughs> it did. <laughs> A fried chicken prime flavor. No, it has it. I have to taste. Oh, you no. gotta taste it. No, it's delicious. Logan gotta go to jail. You said bro. I had try to it. taste it. That was the <laughs> black guy. Go no, no, no. Try it. It's just like I had you? to. No, you. Well, I don't, I'm gonna like it anyway. I don't know anything about this. I mean, you don't flavor your chicken, so it's the same. Yeah, way too much seasoning. But you should try it. <laughs> no, I'm good. That's <laughs> nice. No, I'm good. It's like chicken broth or grease. A little two. bit of chicken That's fried. It. That, that genuinely is not oh, bad. Yeah. What? You it tastes like bone broth. It tastes oh, like... Dude, oh, get the oh, fuck out of here at this guy. You guys guy, ever had bone man. broth? Holistic bone this broth? It's great for disgusting. college. It makes your hair look good. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you guys should try this. Have a sip of that. The sound effect was yeah, really yeah. key. That's really nice, honestly. Ew! <laughs> Ew, it sucks! It tastes like a ramen packet in water. That's great. That's yeah, cool. that, that actually that, sounds pretty good. Hey, try it. <laughs> try it. <laughs> nah, I'm not. I'm Why? Not. Why? I'm not. Cold I'm beer on a Friday night. I stand against this. I don't like this. It why truly do, tastes nothing like wait, chicken why? in I any way. I don't like anything. Can you <laughs> anything about this? Can you try it? Why don't you like anything about it? Nah. Can you try it? You're actually I'm way not too trying that now fucking shit. The fuck, guys. Are we on a podcast that or not? Al, try the fucking fried chicken. No, I'm not. Hey, Al. don't force out a drink. Yeah, Al, shit, yeah. Al. Yo! Al. Now you're stinking up no, the place. No, no, no. Good chicken, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Al. Suck it up. Chicken Stop, juice, get bro. over yourself, dude. Nah, try the fucking fried chicken. I got salmonella. It's not cooked enough. That's terrible. Try the fucking fried chicken. That's terrible. That was terrible. Salmonella? No, God, no, you, got, salmon, you got all the second. Salmonella. salmonella. No. <laughs> no. Jesus. Why are you yelling at me, yo? Why you can't just try it? Yeah, you turn yeah. the knockout on with them nose. <laughs> <laughs> Real talk, baby. Hey, 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 that was close. Nah. <laughs> okay, but in all seriousness, yeah. um, no, so can I have this? This is disgusting, actually. Right. Christ is king. Fried chicken is queen. <laughs> and Dove, here you go. Mm. They should sue his investors. What do you mean? For wasting money for a joke like that. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> Logan should go to jail. Yeah. <laughs> Logan should go to jail. I just looked into this crypto zoo thing. Did you guys <laughs> find out about this no. crypto zoo thing? <laughs> I mean, he's obviously a racist for sending fried chicken yeah. paraphernalia to Alex. Yeah. But outside of his racism, he should go to fucking jail yeah. for this crypto zoo thing. Why didn't nobody tell me about this? Yeah. Why didn't nobody comment on every fucking podcast about it for the last six months? That would have been nice if they did that so we could know. It's crazy. <laughs> fucking crazy. Yeah. Miles, you got any information on crypto zoo? Miles hasn't got any of his money back. Yo, <laughs> yo Miles just keeps waking What's up. Miles do? What the I, what does the he even like, switch the camera like, angles? Bro. Does he even switch the camera angles anymore? Fuck I'm sorry, Miles, are we boring you? <laughs> no, Dad. what about white? <laughs> like, he lives. <laughs> we need a Miles cam just so he actually pays a fuck attention. What just happened? <laughs> one of the lights is flickering. I'm staring up trying to figure out which oh, one it is. Oh, is that what you're doing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what it was. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah, could have came with something better than that. Can we talk about these Miles 11s getting married? Oh my Actually, god. 20, you, they're five oh. and a half. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Look at her back. Oh shit. 
I gotta look at my notes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this is okay. So there are these conjoined twins. Yes, Abby and Brittany. Hensel. Okay, break it. Break down the story. Out. <laughs> <laughs> so what's crazy is that I don't even know why this became a big story right now because she's been married since 2021. Mm. So people just discovered that she was married, oh. and now they're reporting on we it. Weren't ready Took for twice it. as long as a normal story. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, they've actually been make. I actually feel a little bit bad for them because they've been making an effort to stay out of the spotlight because they hate the attention that they get and all the questions that they get and shit like that. But we can't not talk about this because this is crazy. <laughs> so, just being honest here, this is crazy. It's crazy. <laughs> so what, can you tell me which one he's married to? So he's married to Abby. Is which that is the left the, or the that's right? That's gotta be closer. That's the right? left. Wow. Yeah, so. That makes sense. Look at her they got all up on him. The type of twins they are, they have different brains, different hearts, and I think different livers, but then everything weighs down, they share, and then each one controls an arm and it controls a leg. So they, they have to like really get their coordination down on everything they do. Yeah, it's really dope. They drive too, that's crazy. Nah, you yeah. can't do that. Only one drives because only the right yeah. leg girl. I mean, the the just a Let's just say they. Yeah, yeah. Like, dude, just imagine how bad a double woman driving is. <laughs> <laughs> That's nuts. How would she get a fucking license? Yeah. Imagine showing up to your driver's test and this fucking ginger root walks into the car. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta take it seriously. Nah. Are you kidding me? No, but I don't think there's no blind spot. Yeah, it's a good point. Yo. Yeah. This is probably the safest woman driver Yo. in the world. Yeah. Great point. Yeah. You don't even need a rear view mirror looking behind you the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> looking like Bob. <mild. laughs> There's so many upsides. This is awesome. Okay, okay. So so does what's the deal with the other girl? She just gotta be married to does yeah. she get nights off? Does she get nights where she's not getting fucked? Can, so yeah. they both feel the vagina. So, <laughs> so they both had a consent. Yeah. But does she get a night? Does she's like, I just want to sleep with because she's not married to him. Correct. I don't know why both don't just marry him. Yeah. There's only one. It's two hearts. There's two one connection. People. Don't be a monster. Yeah. But like, you could be in a polyamorous relationship. What if they're not poly? You're forcing yeah. them to be poly. Yeah. What the fuck? Aren't you Christian? But you I don't guys get why don't believe you would, in that shit. Why you wouldn't ask? What are you, you a Mormon? Like, you hey, would we send can... them to hell. <laughs> oh jeez, I don't think poly people go to hell. I love how much you're defending them. Yeah. But I'm like, yeah, like they could both just marry him, and then there'd be. All, all synced up. No. <laughs> okay. No. Good no. counter. Good counter. Oh, decent counter. Yeah. What do you think about it, Miles? Uh, apparently, this Boy. all blew up. <laughs> yeah. No, apparently, this all blew up because he's being, uh, he had a former marriage and he's being asked to do a paternity test with his former children. So this is why it's back in the news. I don't Whoa. understand why he would be asked to do a paternity test. Uh, to see if his past uh, wife was cheating on him. So he's requested the paternity test. No, she filed for it. Why would she? That doesn't make any sense. Bro, Why would I'm, she want it? Hey, I'm reading the same shit y'all read. <laughs> oh, maybe he's not claiming the kid, and she's like, yeah, uh, yeah. That does make sense, Miles. Thank you. You're talking about Mari. This is a Mari. <laughs> yeah, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, wait. So can they have kids? What happens? How yeah. many heads will they have? <laughs> does it double? Oh, come on. Son. Does it? No, I'm being honest. <laughs> if it's genetic, because it, it might could be. They might be four of them. I'm just, can we just I'm looking, acknowledge I'm looking, that, that that's just, a possibility? We're looking it up. Let me it's probably look. a possibility, but yeah. Usually, this type of Siamese, they don't uh, make it beyond infancy. So she's like a rare occurrence. I mean, it's amazing what they've been able to do in their life. Yeah, it's fire. I but when she's she, giving him head, does the other girl just have to be like whoa. next to it? Like <laughs> that's crazy. So double toppy is fire. But it's not even double. Like Shorty's yeah, listening to a podcast. Out. One of them is listening to Flagrant, and then the other one is just fucking blowing dick. Bro. <laughs> right? Just along for the ride. That's yeah, crazy. you're just there. That's wild. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe there's like a divider or something. I mean, the noise canceling headphones are crucial. Yeah. Yeah. You could do a, like a divider. Maybe, remember one of those sleeping masks and some noise canceling headphones? You're in your own world. Would you do that if you went out to dinner? This is interesting. Hey, we want to go out to dinner. We and then private time. It, the, the other girl's just like, I'm going to bring my book and I'm gonna, we're going to put a, a little visor or whatever. And then you guys have dinner. I can't hear anything you're saying. And then you have a nice intimate date and I'm just reading my book and I'm hanging out. Oh, and if they're both on dates, then you could just get a visor across the whole thing. Done. And then you have two dudes. Done. Dude, you know what's uh, tough? Far. These are two sisters. They got, they got shit to vent about. 
with the other person. You can't do that. Ever. Oh, wow. You're just there. It's like, hey, I want to complain about you. Put on your own canceling headphones. <laughs> Okay, put on some music. I need to vent about you. But I, yeah, I bet you they complain less, though. I feel like they argue less. Like, their lived experience is such they the exact same. So yeah, They're yeah, always yeah. sharing clothes, you know what I mean? Shit, they would have gotten in trouble during COVID. They can't even social distance. <laughs> yeah, oh, that is true. That's true. That's true. How did they make it through, you think? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> the way you said it? I mean that. It's a valid question. Like, seems like you're feigning curiosity to set up something insane. <laughs> no, I'm being serious. Like, how do they make it through? Now it's coming. <laughs> <laughs> I have no, guys, I don't have built it up any too much, jokes. Nothing. We gotta, I don't have we any jokes. We gotta look away. Uh, all right, let's put on the noise canceling headphones. Yeah, What's another topic headphones. that we can talk about? Is there anything else? God, man. Yeah, shout out to them, yo. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder how they made it through. <laughs> how do you think they made it through? Guys, what did they do to make it through? <laughs> I have no theories. You have a theory? No, I don't have any theories about it. I'm really glad for their relationship. I'm glad that I want to see them dance. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, should we put on some Hillsong and just I would, I would rock right? out Hillsong. Oh, I love Did you it. Do that? Fly, Hillsong and Shard in it? No, because there was no motherfucking Wi Fi, so my Hillsongs didn't pop up. Damn. What'd you do the whole flip? I watched Three Body Problem. Oh, Ooh. hell yeah. Yeah. Fire. Three Body Problem? Three Body Problem. It's a new Netflix show about how. Please, dude, oh. no. It's about Siamese twins that got married, bro. That's fucking... <laughs> <laughs> You're fucking out of your mind. <laughs> Bleep that whole shit that I said and keep exactly <laughs> thing he said because that was amazing. Uh, no, Three Body Problem. It is a uh, new Netflix show <laughs> that has the worst branding I've ever seen, the worst name I've ever seen. There's a couple like casting issues, but the show itself is really compelling and interesting. It's based on this like novel, like one of the highest selling novels ever. And it's done by the guys who did Game of Thrones. And James Cameron tried to buy the rights to the novel multiple times. They just wouldn't give it to him. They, they finally agreed to give it to this guy. It's like one of the most best selling books of all time. Mm -hmm. Really cool story. Uh, and um, wait, but the guys who gave, did Game of Thrones, that was the ones who did season seven and eight. No, that did all, all the, of it. the whole Benny time. Off and Those Dave, guys did David and the David. whole thing, and then oh. seven and eight is where it kind of fell off. Oh, okay. But they did the whole when it was oh, they great, did. they still did it. Okay, okay. yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I and, thought they and, brought new people, and they me, really did it with like. Uh, no writer's room. It was them for all those great seasons that you love. Yeah. So they are, they had a I mean, they really had good fucking set of source books material. To, yeah. yeah. But yeah. Not, no, I'll and then their the writer's source material. Room for all I'll credit the source so material. So to be fair to them, they have source material with an ending this time and they don't have to make their own shitty, god awful ending. Jesus Christ. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I'm in. You're nice. Yeah, I'm in. You're fucking great. So anyway, nice. new show on Netflix. I think very uh, interesting. Uh, how do I tell you what it's about without like giving away too much? Uh, um, you know, just watch it. Yeah, yeah. Maybe just check it out. Yeah, but it's cool. But I, if you're looking at the branding of it, or if you're looking at like trailers and that kind of shit from it, it, it kind of sucks. And mm -hmm. I would see why you wouldn't want to do it. But then when you get into the story, the story is like kind of really interesting, dense, and uh, yeah. and cool. Just yeah. fire. One thing is, show? I don't think you can. I think they're TV a, show. Yeah, not. They a, probably had a lot of approval rights. You're not going to change the name of the book. That's what people know. Yeah. That's what it is. Yeah. And then on the. The first teaser, I agree. You don't know what it's about. Just give it it's a about shot. Nothing. First teaser. Is it going to be the, the show that saves us as a nation that gives us everything to watch every no. single week? No, not at all. It's just another fun thing for us to watch. Fun yeah. show. I started watching The Gentleman. I'm still oh, I heard almost done with the first episode. Yeah, I loved the movie. Did you see the movie? Guy, Guy Ritchie's Ritchie, right? great. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's great. great. Movie was great. This is kind of like taking a part of the movie and making building a series off of that part. But I think it's going to be good. I'm like almost through the first episode, and it's just fun. Just great. Mm. Check it out if you get a chance. It's a vibe. It's a but nice it's vibe. not like uh, the most amazing thing, but it's like a it's good, good. It's quality. Yeah, it's not you good know, distraction. Yeah, great mm. distraction. Good pastime. I'm rewatching Seinfeld, but uh, she, my girl, she's only she's watching it for the first time. So, oh really? Yeah, yeah. So it's like really fun experience. Of Holding up. It. Oh yeah. And first she likes it better this time. Like there was so many things I just missed. You're just or, too young yeah, to too get young it. to get it. But yeah. it's awesome watch. Yeah, and there's certain. Fantastic. So the first season, I I struggle with. 
a couple seasons are early, but it's just a little slower. But then there's things I didn't live in New York, so I didn't get certain episodes. Now like yeah, yeah. one episode, Kramer, they live on the Upper West Side. He's dating a girl on the Lower East Side, and the whole episode is like this long distance relationship, and it's killing them to try to see each other. And if you're not from New York, you're like, I guess, I don't know. But when you live in New York, you're like, yeah, that's crazy, dude. Upper West, Lower East, who's doing that? There's a, Akash said that one of the funniest things when we first met, he was going to look for apartments and uh, he went to look for an apartment in Brooklyn. And uh, he goes, the apartment, (laughs) the apartment was, he goes, the apartment's four miles away. Yeah. Right. He goes, he goes, it took me an hour and a half on the subway to get there. He goes, is the subway going two miles an hour? <laughs> yeah, like, I couldn't understand like, it, dude. He just couldn't get this idea. <laughs> it blew my fucking mind. Yeah, yeah. It was actually, I think it was seven. It was Hoboken to the Bronx. So I'm taking the PATH train, and then I'm taking the, this train, and then transfer. It was two and a half hours, and I was like, I think I could have walked to this. <laughs> but I do understand, like, at, if you're coming from outside the city and you're just looking at mileage. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It, you go Seven minutes. Seven miles is seven minutes. I made yeah. this mistake a week ago. Wait, I was wait, like, wait. looking for apartments, and I was like, okay, what do I set the radius to? Like if, like if I'm looking for places in the area, and I was like, yeah, like two miles. <laughs> two oh, miles, sure. you're in Unit. Connecticut. You're, you're, you're in Pennsylvania. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that was blowing my mind. You don't realize how small this whole shit is. Yeah. How's it looking, the you apartment uh, search? Terrible. Is it bad? <laughs> Wait, tell me, tell me, tell me. I mean, it's just like, you're looking for, like, now the priorities have changed. We're like trying to find just like a nice, regular fucking place. Yeah. And it's just, it's hard to find anything that's like good. Everything's so expensive. And then you're just like looking at like, okay, maybe we just don't eat food anymore. Like, you're trying to like we're trying to like budget in our heads. We're like, yeah, we can like try to skimp here. I don't know. You looking to rent a buck? Rent just in Williamsburg. You want to move Get in with me? I would. Bro. I mean, Dove got the craziest deal of the century, and I asked him. I was like, Dove, what should I do for a place? He was like, moving with Jamil. I was like, okay, yeah. this is productive. <laughs> Jamil got a globalist. <laughs> yeah, fucking globalist, right? Jamil yeah. got a place out in Greenpoint. Yeah, yeah. but I hear that Greenpoint and Williamsburg are kind of like they like meshed. Yeah. 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 Same. The same. Yeah. Mark is bougie. He wants Greenpoint to be is beautiful. Honestly, block. yeah. Greenpoint is great. Yeah, if you're it along is the water on Greenpoint. Bit of a train that's... desert, but it's beautiful. Th- I think that's the only tricky thing, which is is uh, the subway system. Yeah, you have got the bike though. You're yeah, good. which is far. There's also and you don't really things. care about your wife's well being anyway. So yeah. you know, whatever, she'll yeah. figure it out. Yeah, that's like a two bird situation. Yeah. The thing of someone said about like Greenpoint is like. They, there's like no post office. There's like weird things that don't exist there because it wasn't really erected to be mm-hmm. a residential place. Mm-hmm. I think there was a big Polish community that yeah. was always there, yeah. but like, so they just don't have certain things that you just uh, automatically expect. The post office, who fucking needs it, go to FedEx, but mm-hmm. there might be a few other things that are like that. But the fact that the neighborhood has become so popular and living in Brooklyn has become so popular in our lifetime, that two distinct areas that felt far from one another have now just blended in. Yeah. Yeah. Like that's, I know I sound like an old guy right now saying this, but like, can you imagine when we're younger? I still remember Williams Reg when it was rough. Yeah. Like I remember, I remember when it was the fucking uh, globalists. Yeah, it was the headquarters yeah. for the globalists. Bro, I talked yeah. to, I talked I to my mind. I talked to a globalist on the phone trying to like figure out a deal for the apartment. And what did the globalist say? It's the globalist that runs my current apartment. And I yeah. was like, "Is there any way you can keep me in the area? Because my wife is a midwife for the globalist oh, community. So smart. So for so, the globalist, so in but for the yeah. super globies. Oh. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 super yeah. globies. We're talking about the, they got the hats, yeah, yeah, the yeah, curls, yeah, yeah. and then the, the big time yeah, snow yeah. globes. That's not Williamsburg. It's Lithuania. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's fucking. Poland. But I was like, yeah, can you keep us near the neighborhood? Like, do you have another place? And he was like, please what? tell me the globalists took care of you. He's like, we'll look, we'll look for it. But then he tried to check me. He's like, which hospital? I was like, home birth, bro. Come on. <laughs> and then he was like, oh, you're real. Like, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So we're trying to work it out with the globalists. Mm. I mean, we're never calling Jews Jews again, by the way. <laughs> yeah. it's too good. Who would have thought Ann Coulter with an absolute banger? What do you think about it? I'll allow it. See, yeah, it's it's fun. Fun. <laughs> you gotta have fun with it. Yeah, dude. Okay. Crisis King. Yeah. Dude. <laughs> okay, but Crisis King. So, in and yeah, do you have any advice? Apartment hunting? What should I do? Man, should I buy a place and renovate it? What do you think? Oh my god. <laughs> 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 Actually, that's what I. Do. Should I buy, Give me a second. Should I buy a big <laughs> Don't trust do me on most. Advice? financial things <laughs> oh my god who would have thought you would have thought you know you get a nice you know a nice piece of uh, real estate because you got such a globalist name you'd think <laughs> you would yeah, know more once they it. find out you're not globalist then you uh, are just getting feel fucking they feel, they feel yeah, yeah. oh my god but you you got the place without the help of a globalist to seal the deal you use a globy 
but not to find it, right? <laughs> I just want to make sure. I want to just. I located the deal myself. Okay. So Sans Globalist. Nice. Okay. I found the deal. That's yeah. impressive. I'm sure it was listed by a globalist, but I found it. Um, and now we have the meatballs working on it. Mm. <laughs> yeah, they're but good for that. The, the meatballs are very. You need the enchiladas, really. The chimichangas working on it. Honestly, <laughs> the meatballs hire the chimichangas. Okay, okay. So the meatballs have hired the chimichangas. <laughs> and and the chimichangas, uh, I think, are fantastic, but the meatballs, fantastic. I don't know if they're communicating to the chimichangas what needs to get done. Right. So there's really no head meatball. That's the problem. Yeah. Mm. So every time you go in, it's like something hasn't been ordered or something like, you know, I guarantee if there was some fresh fucking tomatoes, they'd get ordered. But when you need <laughs> the meatballs to actually order the millwork, that right. shit doesn't get done. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think that we have what is commonly referred to in the business as a meatball problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because <laughs> the Globy did help you with this space. Put up the walls, do the things. No, quick. no. I Let's be very... Oh. Well, Let's be very clear meatball, about this. No, but the meatball no. found the Kobe. Uh, Nagasaki helped us with this place. Oh, uh, Nagasaki oh. designed this place. Yes. A nuke, a nuke designed this place. <laughs> right? A nuke is good. A nuke designed this place because it rhymes. Yeah. It does well. Design technically oh, wow. built. <laughs> God damn. Hold on. <laughs> that was Kobe. Good. There's a chain here. There's a chain. Go. <laughs> so, so, but then there was. We did have a globalist. <laughs> that came in to do something. They maybe put did the work or something. Did the walls. And then you rubbed him the wrong way so much that he doesn't even answer your phone anymore. <laughs> no, no, no. He loves us. What are you talking about? <laughs> are you really going to sit on this podcast? He loves it. There's one person that doesn't. The Ruskies that did the glass work. But was he also a globalist? Nope. You're lying right now. Nope. I, I can feel the uncircumcised dick just just coming You're through. Lying right now. You're just lying right, there. right now. No. You're lying. No. You're telling a lie. Telling You're telling you. a lie. Boris was not a globalist. Oh, it was Boris? No, I know. Just made up a Russian name. <laughs> well, the name carries a lot of it. Yeah, you can't yeah. make up names. Okay. In all <laughs> serious, in, in conclusion. Nice. Stage statement. Aww. I was, I was annoyed you were on your phone and then I, I heard that. I just saw motion detected. Mm. Now there's a black woman stealing my baby. Whoa. <laughs> you got to go do something. Dude. Yeah. You got to go do something, yeah. bro. Dude. Yeah. Oh, little poop. We did not get back after 400 years. Bro. You got an oxtail grabbing your bro. baby? You got to go do something. <laughs> <laughs> it's an oxtail <laughs> stealing my bro. baby. Can't have a beef. Oh, oh my God. Okay, guys. Listen. Um, in conclusion. In conclusion. Uh, Crisis King. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Shout out the globalists, though. Yep. Globalists. Doing a pretty good job. I fucks with the globalists. I bro. like the globe. Mm. Yo, love the globies. We love you. Mm -hmm. Crisis big, King. Big globalist fan. Crisis King, though. Crisis King. We know that. Um. Anything else? I think those are the two. Shout out Daily Wire. Yep. Yeah. Shout out. Shout out Matt Walsh. Yeah. 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 <laughs> what is a woman? We need to know what the fuck that is. Yeah. yeah. It's at the bottom of that. We are going to get to the Bob. We're going to have him on the pod, see if he could tell, talking mm. all that shit like he knows. Yeah. I'm going to show you a fucking cut, see if you can tell the difference oh. between my dick folded up and a nice, <laughs> fresh cut, yeah. Matt. Wow. I sell my dick. What? Wow. What? what? That could be good. <laughs> Crisis King? <laughs> what else, Miles? <laughs> Happy Miles? Trans coming out there. Happy Trans oh, yeah, Visibility yeah. Day. Yep. Mm -hmm. Happy Miles' uh, attention span of a sparrow day. <laughs> nice. Okay. You see the video of the crow taking down the Israeli flag? <laughs> oh, <that's> oh, man. <laughs> oh. Leave us alone this it's year. It's awesome. hilarious, bro. Hold on. It's on the top. That of is a super funny term for Muslims, Miles. <laughs> <laughs> is oh, man. Okay, oh, let us I see. didn't see this. Bro, that is a bad omen. Yeah, oh, that that is, is crazy. Uh, came out 11 yo, hours ago. Watermelon, yo. <laughs> Water <laughs> no way. I mean, I've never seen a bird take down a flag before. But it, it's a robot, right? It's like a Hamas tool or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that funny? That's what they're using their tech on. Yo, robotic crows. Yo, no, really? that's not real. That's got to be real. Hey, that's got to be yeah. hilarious, though. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, that's awesome. <laughs> that is, that is crazy. It is flames. That's not real. Uh, yeah, that might be God, right there. No, nah, obviously fake news. 
It's not yeah, that's fake news. Alternative that's facts. That's king. That's the king's work right Damn. there. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> we have receipts Christ? this year, guys. I Just think remember. So. Okay, yeah. listen, listen. Well, yeah. Love you. Uh, yeah, he's probably going to use him to return some shit. You fucking. <laughs> <laughs> You got coupons too. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Fucking globies. <laughs> He's away. He's risen. <laughs> Miles is risen. <laughs> and the pod. And the podcast. And the Hillsong. <laughs> Peace. Uh...